following is a special presentation of ESPN on ABC. Kansas City, home of the Royals and the Chiefs, but head west into the fields of the heartland, and the lush landscape could fool you because the wind will blow today at over 200 miles an hour as the IZOD IndyCar Series once again sets sail in the Midwest. And we welcome you to the Kansas Speedway. It's stop number five of 17 races on the 2010 IZOD IndyCar Series Tour. And 27 cars in this field today. And there they are down on the uh, pit lane getting ready to fire engines just a few moments from now. Let's check in on our IZOD IndyCar Series point standings after the first four races. And as you would expect, the guys that have won are up top. Will Power with two wins, followed by Elio Castroneves and Ryan hunter Ray, each with one point, or one win this season. Now, uh, there is our points leader, Will Power. He is not going to be sitting on pole. That's going to go to Ryan Briscoe. And Elio Castroneves, of course, his other teammate, a three-time Indy 500 winner. Let's hear from him, Vince Welch. Well, it is officially the month of May, this being May 1st. And any time you talk about May and racing, you got to talk about this guy, Elio Castroneves. He'll look to join that elite group of four-time winners at Indianapolis later this month. Is there anything that you can take from this oval race here at Kansas? I know things are a lot different than what you'll see at the Indianapolis 500, but is there anything that you can take from this race to the 500 later this month? You know, uh, technical, the, rhythm, the actually the rules are completely different, but um, you can take the rhythm, you know, kind of like the momentum. You kind of understand about your competitors you know because when you go to the month of May that's who you're gonna uh, race against so it's it's that's the only thing basically you take which is a lot believe it or not when you're going to the Indy 500 those small details makes a big difference well Elio will certainly be one of the favorites at Indianapolis one of the favorites today this guy is teammate Ryan Briscoe team Penske has won three of the four races this season Ryan looks to get to victory lane today what changes in the driver's mindset as you transition from the road and street courses to the ovals? Well, it changes it a lot. Um, you know, the, the road and street courses, you drive so aggressively and we're hitting curbs and bumps and always driving the car sideways. And, you know, the, the ovals, you really got to take it down a notch and be very smooth and precise and really work with your engineer on the very fine details like Elio was talking about. Um, but I'm excited, you know, uh, we, we were strong on all the one and a half miles last year and Indy, uh, of course, and uh, it's been a long time time since Homestead, but uh, I'm really excited to be back here in Kansas. Ryan Briscoe starts from the pole here today. Team Penske has won three of the first four this season, Marty. Thank you, Vince. And as you take a look at the statistics, remember the first four races have all been on road and street courses. That's the strength of Will Power. That's where he's got his two wins here in 2010. As you can see, he has yet to win on the oval. So as we come topside, we bring in Scott Goodyear. Let's talk a little bit more about Will because it reminds me of the days when Sam Hornish was running the series and it's just the opposite. It really is the opposite. I mean, with Will, he's so strong in the road courses, you know, and you speak to him here this weekend, you don't sense the same amount of confidence with Will here as you did maybe like at St. Pete's or Long Beach. So for him, he knows he just wants to get out of here with points. He even said maybe a top five and that's his thinking because he knows he's in a learning process right now. That's the way Sam Hornish used to be. If I could get top five on the road, road course, course I'd be happy so it's interesting how it works and they do have two championships a road course championship for the series and an oval but you know let's talk about the guys that have traditionally been right up there fighting with Team Penske and of course that's Chip Ganassi's racing but they've got a big surprise this year their performance or lack thereof by the team last year's title chase was a knockdown drag out with Team Penske but errors by both Dario Franchitti and Scott Dixon coupled with tactical errors and a few bad breaks have left the team looking up from a very unfamiliar position. And here are the numbers to back this up. And you can see in 2009, each of them had wins at this point. They were fourth and first in the points. Look at their tied for fifth. And look at the laps led. Just 55 so far this year. Jamie Little. Well, it certainly hasn't been the start of the season that Scott Dixon or Dario Franchitti won. But the good news, Dario, you guys are back on an oval. And here at Kansas, the place you guys, this team has won the last three races. With that said, how do you think this can affect the outcome? Yeah, the, the, the target team has always done a great job here at Kansas. But, you know, last year and most years we've done a good job on all kinds of tracks. We just 
start of the season has been a bit slow on the road courses and the street courses just didn't get the right, weren't making the right choices. I made some mistakes, the guys made some mistakes, so we're happy to be here in Kansas. We think the Suave car is good enough to win, but uh, I think that number nine target car is pretty good too. All right, he's the defending series champion looking for his first win here at Kansas. Marty? And he's going to be starting third today on the grid. As uh, you see, there is the 27 car field. And as we mentioned, it is the month of May. Four weeks from tomorrow, and we'll be at the Brickyard for the greatest spectacle in racing. Can Elio Castroneves win his fourth race at the 500? Or does Danica Patrick turn another page of the history book? Find out on ABC Sunday, May 30th. We'll be on the air at noon. ESPN's coverage of the IZOD IndyCar Series at Kansas on ABC, presented by IZOD, the official apparel sponsor of the IZOD IndyCar Series, available at Macy's. Honda, the engine supplier for the IZOD IndyCar Series. And Verizon, the network with the most 3G coverage. And the drivers are on the uh, laps around the track here, being introduced to all the fans. The 27 cars on the starting grid as we get ready for race number five of the 2010 IndyCar Series Tour. You know, so far this year, four drivers from Andretti Autosports have redefined the team's position within the series. And the turnaround on the road courses has been led by Tony Kanaan and especially Ryan hunter Ray With a second at Brazil and a win at Long Beach, the question now is, can Andretti Autosport do as well on the ovals and Rick De Brule, we may be getting some of our answers early. Yeah, what a great start to the season it was. Not just a win for Ryan hunter Ray, but the first win for Andretti Autosport in two years. But they come here, and it's been a frustrating weekend, qualified 22nd. Did you guys find anything overnight to increase the speed of this car? Well, you know, there's no, there's no panic yet. I mean, this team gives us some great race cars. You know, we've uh, only half the time we've been racing together. We've been on the podium, so we know we can uh, we can get it right. We're just we're working at it. We looked at some things from yesterday. We put one thing on the car to see if we have an answer. But the good thing is, the main picture is Indy, and we have time to sort it all out before then. Uh, and, what, and what do you want to get out of this weekend to take to Indy? What is your trying to get out of this today? Well, you know, Tony last year had an issue with the car that he had to switch last minute, and. Uh, there's some issues there that they're looking at and and you know we, we think that the car is good the Honda engine is definitely good so there's just some there might be some mechanical drag that we need to work out something like that but it's uh, it's definitely it's solvable for sure before the big picture which is Indy so we're, we're not panicked here we'll go out there we'll have a good race today and uh, head to Indy all right a great finish is great but the warmer for Indy is what really matters of course his teammate is also a little frustrated with this weekend for more on that let's go to Vince Welch Tony Kanaan won this race in 2005. He was third last year in the same car he's running today, but uh, we haven't seen many smiles from you this weekend. What's been the issue, TK? Yeah, Vince, I don't know. I think uh, we haven't found the setup this weekend. Uh, we seem a little slow. Uh, we work on full tanks a lot, so qualifying wasn't going to be really representative, but I wasn't expecting to start this far back. But uh, we've got to keep a positive attitude. I think uh, we do have a good race car. It's going to be tough, though, because the field is so close right now, but uh, let's go race. That's all we can do. Tony Kanaan, I don't care what kind of race car he's got. He always seems to be in the mix at the end, doesn't he, Marty? That's true, Vince. Let's take a look at the numbers again from the first four races, and you can see that uh, Ryan hunter ray has been carrying the banner, and Danica Patrick has been struggling mightily on the road courses, but yet she is now the top qualifier for this team, and that is ninth, and that tells us one thing. What necessarily works on one discipline, like the road and street courses, doesn't necessarily transfer to the oval. And the team's had a lot of changes. Obviously, Michael Andretti is now the sole owner of that team, Andretti Autosport. They think they got lost, maybe in some engineering issues last year, but right now they have to find their speed here at Kansas because Indy is a big race, a lot of sponsorship on that team. They know how important it is. Well, one of the teams that we thought was going to be one of the players this year early as the most improved was KV Racing, but now the eyes are focused on Dreyer and Reinbold because they've been garnering a lot of attention. Six top tens between their two drivers, Justin Wilson and Mike Conway, and Justin has finished second twice, and now Dry and Rainbow looks to carry that momentum here onto the ovals. And here are the numbers for these two teams. And you can see it's uh, very impressive, especially when you look at the fact they've got six top tens. And Thomas Schechter will be in a third car for this team at the Indianapolis 500. Let's check in once again with Jamie Little. Well, Justin Wilson making his third start here at Kansas, third different team. And with that said, you were very optimistic about this car yesterday heading into practice, but you had some issues. What were they? Well, 
At first, we had a lot of understeer and was washing out, had to get out the throttle before hitting the wall. So uh, we, fa we, we fixed that. Everything was great in qualifying. The car felt fantastic, but it uh, wasn't quite as quick as we were hoping for. So we've studied the data. We've made it a little bit better. And I think this charter car can actually be uh, pretty quick in the race. And I'm hoping we can move forward a lot. Well, he's been great on a road course. He hopes to prove he's just as good on an oval. Marty? And Justin Wilson, uh, another one of those guys, are very strong on the road courses. And a smile from Danica Patrick as we uh, have, will be waiting to see, can she make a rebound on the oval? Sarah Fisher, one of four women in the race. This is the first time we've seen Sarah this year as she's a specialist on the ovals. Milka Duna will be starting 24th. And a young lady that we'll introduce you to, Sylvestra Silva Di Simona, when we come back here as Simona Di Silvestre will be starting 18th. And we'll meet her when we return here to the Kansas Speedway for race number five of the 2010 IndyCar schedule. I'd like to go to space, be an astronaut for a day. Not a bobsled driver. Definitely not that, I can, I can say that. Football player, because what would it be like to get hit that hard and what do you say to each other out there? And I mean, we know in golf and stuff, they're probably not talking smack, but in football, I bet they are. I'm an FBI agent. Why? Because I, I always wanted to be a cop and I would like to boss people around. If I could be anybody or anything uh, uh, for one day, I have to say it would be Roger Penske. Imagine you have great family, great life, and everybody respects you in the whole world. Come on, are you kidding me? <laughs> Scott, what about you? Well, besides being Elio Castanevis and a three-time winner of the Indy 500, I guess I'd like to be a hockey player playing in the Stanley Cup Game 7. A lot of pressure, a lot of fun, a lot of excitement. Well, that makes sense. Coming from Canada, well done. All right, we have mentioned the fact we have four ladies in the field. There's Sarah Fisher. And we could potentially come the month of May at the Speedway have five. Anna Beatrice could be a fourth member of Dreyer Rheinbold. And look at the international flavor today. Venezuela, Switzerland, the USA represented amongst those four talented female drivers. We caught up with uh, Danica Patrick, Vince Welch, uh, just a few moments ago. Vince? Well, this is the first oval of the IZOD IndyCar Series season, but uh, not for Danica Patrick. She's run four oval races already, ARCA once, and uh, three NASCAR events. What, if anything, translates from those races to what you're going to have today? Uh, well, you know, I mean, the, the cars are completely different, but the fact that I've already done eight races and half of them being ovals and nobody else has done an oval race yet, at least to what I know anyway, um, you know, it's uh, it's just good good practice, um, just staying in the car and and being sharp. And, um, you know, I I think we've put the GoDaddy car in a position to do something good today. I, I hope things work out for us. We're in it to win it, you know? You said that you were looking forward to getting back onto the ovals after the road and street course uh, results. A little more pressure today on the oval to get a strong finish? Well, I I definitely feel like this is my, my place to shine a little bit more. Um, you know, it's always so nerve-wracking going into the oval races because on oval, on an oval, the practice is done, but then the race is where you really do, really all the action comes in. And on a road course, all the practice is where it happens, and then the race is just the race, and it's very follow the leader and very much just about maybe saving fuel. So um, I'm nervous now, but, I, you know, it's no different than any other. Danica Patrick, she'll start ninth today, Marty. All right, thanks, Vince. Here are the numbers for uh, both Danica and uh, Simona. As uh, Danica's best finish was seventh, Simona 16th, although Simona did lead laps at the first race of the year back in Brazil. This, of course, being her first career oval race today. Let's meet the young lady from Switzerland. I'm Simona Di Silvestro. I'm from Thun, Switzerland. Swiss Miss is kind of a, my nickname right now. I don't really like it personally, but you know, uh, if people want to call me like that, it's fine. <laughs> my dad told me that when I was a baby, I was only quiet when the Formula One races were on TV. So uh, I think as soon as I was born, uh, I kind of uh, really liked motor racing. When you're in the smaller series, you always think about Formula One or Indy cars, and now being in Indy cars just kind of happened, which is a, a really nice achievement, I think. This year is my first year that I'm actually racing against other women. I've never done that in the smaller categories. I was always the only one. 
you know, Danica is in this series, which uh, she's kind of, you know, the most known of us. It's really great to be competing against her, but, you know, it's not my focus to beat uh, all the, the girl drivers, pretty much like all the other 24 drivers that I have to be. Leading uh, my first laps in the series was uh, in Brazil uh, in the beginning of the year on the first race. It was uh, really special to me. Simona de Silvestro, she is shown as the leader. We actually had a restart and I was leading and I had Dario and Ryan behind me, so I had a bit of pressure there, but uh, I think I managed pretty well. My goal for this year, it's really kind of to learn uh, as much as I can. This is a very confident woman and somebody to keep your eye on. To win a championship or even the Indy 500 is, is a goal, you know. I think it, it's everybody's goal out there, but uh, I'm really pushing forward to try to do that. Simona de Silvestro inside the cockpit and the goal today, Scott, just get those laps. Well, I get the laps on the oval, but everybody is impressed with her in the whole garage area, especially after taking off the restart down in Brazil and pulling away from very experienced drivers that were behind her. A very impressive run for this young lady. Well, as you can tell, we're getting ready to go racing. Coming up next, we'll get the command to fire engines and get race number five of the 2010 series schedule underway. Back here at Kansas Speedway as the excitement continues to build for this race with 27 cars in the field. In fact, we'll give you the starting grid across the top of your screen. And you already know that uh, Ryan Briscoe will be on point as we uh, take the green flag. But there is one of the two cars going to the rear, the 26 of Marco Andretti and also the number four of Dan Weldon. What happens is the white line here is out of bounds. And drivers were told, even in qualifying, you go underneath that white line your time will be disallowed. Both of those drivers did that. There's the white line, and uh, they're both going to be starting further back in the field. Now, for Weldon, he came back in 04 at Richmond. He was 20th out of 22 cars to win the race, and he has a great track record here at Kansas. Two-time winner when he was driving with Target Ganassi Racing, and two other times. This guy finished second here, and, I mean, it was incredible because if you total the two of them, it's a tenth of a second that he lost those two races by. And very impressive run, and I think that's what gives him the confidence today to start from the rear, Marty, because when I spoke with him down at the driver's meeting, a lot of confidence. He knows he had a good car because he was up to third, but for Dan Weldon, a very special driver, and look, you look at here, 2005 and 2006, Six. He was very, very close. And then 2007, eight, first place. Not a great run in 2009. Had some difficulties, but a driver that understands his racetrack. By a tenth of a second, he could have been a four-time winner here. Now, one other distinction that he has is he's in a selective group. And you're seeing a lot of historic video. A.J. Foyt amongst this group. As you see all these wonderful drivers, Bobby Unser included, remember this. Each one of these won the race prior to the Indianapolis 500. Mario Andretti in that group as well as uh, we mentioned Dan Weldon and he was the last to do it back in 2005. Al Unser Jr. of course in this group and there is Dan as uh, he was drinking the milk just a few weeks away. Can he do it again today? This, could, this is going to be fun to watch him come from the rear. Well, I think the thing for him right now is he's going to team up with Marco Andretti, who was also put to the end, and those guys were talking in the driver's meeting, and he, Marco he said, I'm just going to follow you, Dan. Well, a 27-car field is about to get the command to fire engines. Remember, this is a 1.5-mile oval, totally different track than what we'll see at the end of the month at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. But the one thing you can take out of here is momentum. Them, and that's what you want heading to the biggest race of the year. Let's go trackside to get this started. Speedway race fans, are you ready? It's time for those most famous words in motorsports. Please welcome the Senior Director of Finance for Time Warner Cable, Sharon Lindenbaum. Drivers, start your engines. Command has been given. Beginning with row one. Pit Texas, let me hear you. Control, row one, hot. Row two, hot. Three, hot. Four, hot. Row five, hot. Six, hot. Seven, hot. Hot. 
Copy. All engines are running. And that's exactly what that process is. The IndyCar officials getting the word that all 27 cars have fired. Now, there is uh, Dan Weldon. He is going to also serve as our in-race reporter today. Let's see if we can talk to him, Scott. Dan Weldon, Scott Goodyear up in the booth here. Outstanding record here at Kansas. Couple of wins, two second place finishes. You're at the back here today, though. Can you get up to the front and win this event? Yeah, absolutely, Scott. I think uh, the National Guard Panther Racing team did a phenomenal job. Uh, we've been working hard over the winter. We've been really competitive everywhere we've been. And uh, we'd like to continue that. We had a... So he's stalled the car. You can see the starter going in the back, Marty. So they'll get him re-fired and then he will join back into the group exactly where he is positioned. Remember, he did qualify third. And as you mentioned, he was taken back of the pack because of crossing over the white line in qualifying. Now, this might be something a little Go bit GCU more. E they are recycling the ignition on this. So something has happened. And, and now he's the other way. And as you said, he will be able okay, to watch. These guys are now. get right back no, into his position. Watch okay. your speed now till you get out there. And we're going to just let him get back up to the group because he's got to get his mind back into the program to get going into turn one at 200 miles an hour here very quickly. All right, let's get our final updates uh, from pit lane. Jamie Little, you're up. Well, we've talked a lot about Will Power, and you know, he waited very patiently for an entire year to get this full-time ride with Roger Penske. Well, so far this year, it has paid off. After four races, he has two wins, three poles, and he is the series points leader. But we're on an oval. He doesn't have as much experience here. He told me yesterday, due to his lack of experience, he doesn't see that as an excuse. He feels he has a car capable of winning and he wants to get the job done today. Vince? Well, this is the first of four straight races that will be run on an oval. A third of the field here today has limited oval experience and there are four drivers that have never driven an IZOT IndyCar Series machine on an oval in a race. Their goal is the same, run to the finish, get as many laps and as much experience as possible that they can use to their advantage over the course of these next four races. But one thing you've got to keep in mind, and they were warned in the driver's meeting, the longer your stint goes, the fuel load is going to burn, the tires are going to wear, the car's handling is going to be much different than you have experienced in the past. Keep an eye on those drivers with little oval experience. Rick DeBrule. Well, another new driver this weekend is definitely no rookie and no stranger to the ovals. John Andretti out here with Richard Petty Motorsports and Andretti Autosport back here because he's going to be running at Indy. This is going to be a warm-up. Where else can you get a guy with this kind of experience? He's won an open wheel. He's won a NASCAR. He's won the 24 hours of Daytona. So this is a warm-up to get ready for Indy, not just for him, but for the team as well. They pulled all these guys out of the garage. They pulled them out of the works. Now they're going to gel together this weekend, so they're ready for Indy. Marty? And it's always great to have uh, John back in the field. Here are our GoDaddy.com rules of racing. Well, 20 pushes for the drivers to get a push to pass. More horsepower at last 12 seconds in length. Takes 10 seconds for recovery. We'll watch for that throughout the day. The pit window here, 45 to 50 laps, depending on the strategy in the yellow, probably three to four stops here today. And the fuel trim, big issue here because there's no longer a driver adjustable fuel trim inside the cockpit and it's always on full rich, full racing mode, and the drivers will have to make up some fuel trim options themselves by driving, Marty. Here are our six on board. You already know we have one with Dan Weldon as we talk to him. Danica Patrick, Scott Dixon, Marco Andretti, Ryan hunter Ray, and John Andretti. So the field is uh, now forming up as we are on the final warm-up pace lap as uh, they head down the back straightaway. And of course, we'll be keeping our eyes up front on the first few rows, but also keeping tabs on Dan Weldon and Marco Andretti, especially Weldon, as we mentioned, he actually qualified third on time, but got sent to the rear because of the violation over the white line. Coming through turn three and four, pace car pulls off. They come down the front straightaway here at Kansas Speedway, and race number five of the 2010 IZOT IndyCar Series is green. tires three wide through the corners down the back straight away and into three and already with the full fuel load you're seeing the sparking as these cars are hitting some of those bumps 
Now those sparks will certainly go away as they burn off fuel, but in a couple of laps, once the tire pressures start to come up, then certainly the car comes off the ground. Marco Andretti is on the move. As uh, we mentioned, he was in the back of the field. Right now, he's already uh, up to 19th, and we're on board with him here on lap two. The race leader is Ryan Briscoe, and here he goes outside to Takuma Sato. Elio Castro Neves right there coming into your screen and leading this front pack with Vitor Mir right behind him, and then a three-car wide routine, but they finally sort out. Mike Conway was sort of in the middle of that for a moment. Everybody said, well, cooler minds prevail. Tony Kanan also in that mix. There you see him in the 7-Eleven machine. Now, Tony's always one that gets the most out of his car. And we move up to the front here. Now we see the Penske and Ganassi run that's going on. And now for Ryan Briscoe, who was on pole and has the lead. And was certainly a disappointment, I think, for the Ganassi team, Marty, because they thought they would have a shot at qualifying on pole here and taking the points that go along with that. That's a Deki Muto right there in the 06, the 24 of Mike Conway. That is for position as these two side by side with Tony Kanan now sneaking up into this mix. It is still Briscoe, Dixon, and Franchitti, your top three. And while all these guys are side by side, it's allowing that first group to pull away. And Mike Conway just still working to try to get past Hideki Muto. Now Conway sometimes doesn't have the most amount of patience. I'm sure his spotter right now is telling him, patience, patience, patience. It's a long race. You're wheel to wheel, 210 miles an hour. There's no room for error here. Now you see the numbers in the battle for sixth right now, and you get a wider view here on the track. As the log jam really is further back. There's Elio Castro Neves and Vitor Mira. They're still going after each other, Hammer and Tong. Battle for fourth. And now Vitor pulls behind. Well, not for long. Well, as a race driver, you don't ever want to be behind the car that's in front of you, that's for sure. Right now, you should be getting into a rhythm here, starting just to get a feel for how the car is working. The tire pressures are up, the temps are up, and you're starting to see what kind of a car you have. Remember, since we qualified yesterday, the last time these cars were on track, we have the NASCAR trucks here this weekend, and they are actually been running here this morning, so the track is going to be just a little bit different. And that's a Goodyear rubber instead of Firestone rubber, and so you're right, a few laps to get it worn in. On board with Danica Patrick with Ryan Hunter Ray and Ryan has been on the move from the drop. He's up to 14th right now. Danica has dropped back to 13th and she's about to get dumped to 14th. Well, I'm speaking to those guys this morning, both TK and Ryan. The drivers meeting some changes made from the car from where it was yesterday. They had to because did not have very strong cars in qualifying. But Marty, more times than not, if your car's not working in qualifying, you put it in a race scenario and all of a sudden it starts to work not too bad for you because all the other cars that are on the racetrack make that squirrel pot and sort of help drag you along in the toe. Marco Andretti, who also started back in the back of this field, he too is on the move as Andretti right now is in 15th position. There's Takuma Sato underneath him. We can tell you uh, the one guy that hasn't moved much is Dan Weldon. He is running 22nd right now. Let's go back and check up on the lead up front. Ryan Briscoe has a one-tenth of a second lead. That's what it looks like right there with Dixon second, Frankiti third, and then it's another second back to Vitor Mira and Elio Castroneves. We're going to go side by side here at Kansas. Every time I search for a domain name at GoDaddy.com, a girl talks to me. A girl, watch, SmokingHotDreamGirl.com. Danica Patrick. So, do the little maniacs want another domain name? Yes, please. <laughs> How about smokinghotdance.com? Oh. See more now at godaddy.com. Take me out to the brickyard. Take me out with the crowds. Buy me some earplugs and a checkered cap. I don't care if we ever get back. Take me out to the brickyard. Take me out where it's loud. This place has a history that stirs the soul. A hundred year drama that never gets old. Let me root, root, root over the engine's roar. 
Let me cheer every driver and car for its 300, 400, 500 miles around the old brickyard. ABC Monday. I've been dying to eat here. Well, evidently, you're not the only one. TV's most notorious chef bites the big one. Did you always have sex in the restaurant? Ow. It's a recipe for disaster with culinary king Rocco Despirito. I ought to punch you in the face, Castle. Eight suspects, one saucy dish. You're hot for Castle. You want to make little Castle babies. He can hear us. And a very sweet ending. ABC's Castle. All new Monday at 10, 9 central on ABC. After 15 of 200 laps, Ryan Briscoe has led from the drop of the green flag, and he'd only led 13 laps all season long in the first four races. And as we mentioned, he's already led 15. Now, you notice there's a change for second. As you probably saw it on side-by-side. -side. Here's what it looked like. It looked like Dixon just got a bit of a wiggle as he started to make it a bit of an aggressive move behind Briscoe. Maybe his car's not going to be working for him in traffic as of yet. Wait for him to make some changes during the fist pit stop. And actually, what ends up happening here with Dario Franchitti, He'll turn around and end up taking second place, Marty. Jamie, let's get more on that nine car. Well, Marty, actually what we've noticed down here, the wind is picking up, and that's exactly what Scott Dixon said. He said the wind has picked up and pushed me up the track. That was a big issue yesterday in practice, especially coming out of turn four. There was a lot of push in the car. So right now, car seems to be just fine for Scott. It's just a matter of the wind gusts. John Andretti and Will Power, and Will Power sort of sliding back a little bit further. Right now he is 16th, Andretti is 15th as they are heading through the corner side by side, and right in front of them, another pair of cars side by side as well as we look out the back of Danica Patrick's car. Danica right now running 14th. She's got her hands filled on the high side with Rafa Matos. And for John Andretti on the low side there in the 43 in the Petty Andretti Autosport team car, what a job he did. Hadn't been in the car for such a long time. Came here for a one-day refresher earlier this week. Team was very impressed. He was right up to speed. Goes across the back side of the car in front. And what ends up happening with that, you lose the front end. You heard him get out of the gas. And then now he's back on trying to do the chase. All right, let's go back uh, to the battle up front because it is still Ryan Briscoe, Dario Franchitti, Scott Dixon. Then you can see Vitor Mirror off to the right in fourth. And Elio Castroneves rounding out the top five. And here comes Dixon on the high side, looking to take back second place. Now, what he's going to hope is that Franchitti being on the lower side, directly behind Briscoe, is going to have to get out of the throttle a little bit, which he did because he was falling behind some dirty air. He would have washed up the racetrack and into his teammate. So very smart move by Franchitti. Lets his teammate go ahead. That might not be the case if it's down to the last lap or two, Marty, but right now, the very early stages of this race, he knows what kind of mistake he could have made if he had kept his foot on the gas. The top five have pulled away from the rest of the field by 4.3 seconds. There you can see that top group. Then you have to wait quite a bit until everybody else comes into view. Elio Castroneves is the last member of that freight train, and tip of the hat to the 14 of Vitor Mira. Here's the second group with Tony Kanan leading that freight train. Hideki Muto, Mario Marias, EJ Vizo, and Ryan hunter Ray is now in 10th, folks. And this car yesterday, I'm telling you, it was junk. It just would not work by itself. Jamie, what's the latest you're hearing? Well, junk was the word yesterday, absolutely. It was 24th out of 27 cars in practice. I asked him what was going on. He said the car was so bad, they quieted the rear end, added a bunch more front wing, and the plan was to do even more overnight. That seems to be working for him. He's saying the car is just a bit loose right now on the first round of pit stops. He's just going to make this, the rear bar a little softer to help that out. So 
heat continues. Vince, uh, what have you got from Pitt Marine? Well, Marco Andretti is having a fantastic run as you get a look at his teammate there, Ryan hunter Ray. But Marco started 26th, and he's up 15 spots. One of the additions of this uh, Andretti Autosport team, Ryan hunter Ray, I think has been one of the keys to the resurgence of a Canon and a Marco Andretti. He has really raised the bar, and he's given another driver to that fold that provides data, setup information. It's been a real key to the uh, success of this uh, Andretti Autosport team as you see that battle up front. And it is getting better Vince because oh Scott Dixon now pulls to the high side of Ryan Briscoe. Look at how close these are going through the corners and this is what we're used to seeing here at Kansas. And remember this is 210, 212 miles an hour and it seems like Dixon is not content just to sort of sit back and maybe try and save fuel. I think he wants to get up front and lead some of this and maybe have an opportunity to collect some points for most laps led. There is your Firestone telemetry. Oh, so close, Marty. Look at that. The left front, the right rear. As we look outside. at the telemetry right now. Go outside. Spot oh, information yeah. coming for Ryan Briscoe, telling him that Dixon is still outside. Some traffic is just ahead, already entering up into turn three and four. Looks like the 66 of Jay Howard possibly they'll be coming up to. And as Briscoe goes up, he'll see down the stretch here that he's got to make a run at this. And I think Frank Keaton, excuse me, Dixon is going to look to have a run around the high side. He wants to put his car in place. So when they come up to the traffic, Marty, he might be able to take advantage of that. Oh, so close. He's tucked right up underneath him. Now goes to the outside once again. Traffic in front of him is the 34 of a Roman Cini. Whoa. Whoa, that was close. Yes, the 34 cars are identical that and the 66 with Jay Howard, but the traffic will stay on the low side as they were instructed through the driver's meeting. And on the back side of that now, as they've been fighting, Dario Franchitti in the 10 machine is now coming into play. So the top three still running very close together. Briscoe, Dixon, Franchitti, then it's another second back to Mirror and Elio Castroneves. Stay with us. We've only got 28 laps, now 29. And for this message and a word from our ABC stations. Here at Kansas Speedway, we have a new leader, Scott Dixon. We've got to talk to him about waiting until we're in side-by-side -side before he makes the pass. He uh, took the lead from Ryan Briscoe just a few moments ago. And you can see the margin right now as uh, he has got that number nine target Ganassi car on a rail. It looks like Briscoe just left the bottom side open just a little bit for whatever reason. And then for Scott Dixon, he filled it and turned around, came through the front stretch. Now we can see how close they are. Side by side with him. Still there. Still there. Clear, but not by much. <laughs> Clear by half right now. Clear by not by much. I love that 360 degree onboard camera because you can see everything. And Dixon now has opened up a one second lead. He's coming up on traffic though. That's Simona Di Silvestro as she is about to go a lap down. As we go a little bit further back in the field, after the top five of Briscoe, Franchitti, Mira, and Castro Nevis, you got to go another five seconds back to Tony Kanan in six, and he's got his hands full with EJ Vizo closing in on him, and you saw the gap right there. You know, and for Tony Kanan, he's running very respectable laps. He's just over 209 miles an hour, and uh, the leader right now, Dixon, is running 210, so they certainly have improved those Andretti Autosport cars, and as we're on board now with Danica will just sort of see, watch her steering wheel. Let's see how the car is working for her. Listen to the throttle, off the throttle. The car is working well for you, Marty. You should be flat out around here as we watch the Firestone telemetry. Let's just watch the numbers here going into turn three, four, way off. And that looks like a car that she's not very happy with right now, Vince Wells, as she's getting off the throttle a fair amount in the middle of the turn. Interesting, Scott, that Danica told us before the race that she thought she was going to have a car that uh, she was going to like in race conditions. You know, she's working with uh, engineer Eddie Jones, and Eddie Jones has uh, been around this Andretti group for a long time. Very confident that this is a winning combination. Tom Anderson handling her strategy said he really likes the chemistry between Eddie and Danica. Remember, this is one of those races that you got to have your car just right the last 50 laps, not necessarily the first 50. 
But you don't want to go a lap down, that's for sure. And right now, Danica, 13 seconds behind the race lead in 16th position. Let's check in on Dan Weldon because surprisingly, this was the guy we thought would be slicing and dicing his way to the front. He is in 22nd position. He's the next car to go a lap down. He's 24 seconds back. And very surprised because he really thought this morning that his car would be able to be up towards the front in a short amount of time. Matter of fact, he thought he'd lead that charge with Andretti behind him, but that's not the case. Vince Welsh, he's just not up to speed. This team had to make a decision, Scott. They had to decide whether they wanted to go with more downforce to get them through the traffic with a stable race car or less downforce that would allow them to run up front with the leaders once they got to the front. They chose less downforce, and now they're regretting it because Dan Weldon does not have the race car that can handle in traffic. And as you know, Jamie Little mentioned earlier, the wind gusts have picked up down here. That's been an issue as well. Definitely looking forward to their first pit stop where they can make some changes to make this car better for Dan Weldon. Well, he's in jeopardy of going a lap down. In fact, as we head for side by side, he is going to go a lap down because there goes Scott Dixon. Select Izard IndyCar driver. Driver selected Marco Andretti. Select race transport. Mission finish first. wins at race to the party.com at the indy 500 drivers put complete trust in their cars but when you're out on the road trying to make it to work are you sure you can trust your motor oil put your trust in peak performance motor oil formulated to protect against thermal breakdown peak is the only motor oil tough enough to be the official oil of the indianapolis 500 whether you cover 500 miles in a few hours or it takes hours to get to work you can count on peak. When you peak, you win. Air travel is incredibly safe. I know, but at the end of the day, it is still a building on its side being thrown from one place to another. ABC Comedy Wednesday. An all-new modern family goes on a family vacation. I forgot my wallet. I can't get on the plane without my ID. I can get you home and back before the plane takes off. Let's go. That's if everyone gets on board. Hello? You're supposed to be here with me. Oh, no. My keys. Oh, no. ABC's Modern Family. All new Wednesday, 9, 8 central on ABC Comedy Wednesday. Scott Dixon is making this his own show right now in the early goings of this race at lap 48. Here comes Brian Briscoe in for his first pit stop, Jamie Little. And he's the first one, the first taker onto pit road, has a little push in three and four. That again was because of the wind, as he told me yesterday. You see a turn of the front wing, four tires. Brian Briscoe is down and away. Tony Kanaan also in as well here on lap 49. An 8.3 second stop for TK and other takers as well. The three car of Elio Castroneves, you saw on side by side, he had gotten around for fourth place. He surrenders that position. And meanwhile, Dixon is still out there logging laps. Rick DeBrule. Yeah, EJ Viso, who started six has moved up to seventh. They do a quick change. He says the car is a better racer than it was a qualifier. And our race leader is coming in, Jamie. And Scott Dixon says he needs more security in the rear. He's going to take four tires, make an air pressure adjustment to try to tighten up that rear end, give him more stability. But he also said that right as he was making. You see the crew cam right there, right front, putting on those Firestone Firehawks for who was your leader, Scott Dixon. Down and away, clean stop. Right now, Dario Franchitti is shown as the race leader as he has yet to make his first stop, but we expect him any moment now. And your pit window, there he is, as Franchitti comes down pit lane. 
So the cycle continues here under green flag. Will power in as well. We have been told he is having some radio communication problems as they are still putting the full fuel load on our current points leader in the eyes on IndyCar Series. I think that car looks like it's actually not parked in the correct spot in the pit box because they were stretching that fuel cord. And he is still there and you can see now he finally gets out. And that is going to be very costly for the number 12 of Will Power. Yeah, it just looked like it was a bit too far away from the wall. Maybe he missed his marks because the fuel was extended. And it was actually into the Buckeye, but it certainly looked like they had problems actually getting the fuel into the car. So after cycling through our first round of green flag pit stops, Scott Dixon again reasserts himself as the race leader. So with lap 52, now lap 53, getting uh, business as we are working here just past the quarter mark of the Kansas Speedway race. Take me out to the brickyard. Take me out with the crowds. Buy me some earplugs and a checkered cap. I don't care if we ever get back. Take me out to the brickyard. Take me out where it's loud. This place has a history that stirs the soul. A hundred year drama that never gets old. Let me root, root, root over the engine's roar. Let me cheer every driver and car. For it's 300, 400, 500 miles around the old brickyard. came to visit Haplin, Minnesota and uncovered the mysteries of ABC's Happy Town. It's the marvelous and the mysterious rolled into one. Wednesday, 10, 9 central. Welcome to ABC's Happy Town. Don't let the name fool you. All new Wednesday, 10, 9 central on ABC. The NBA playoffs continue on ABC Sunday. First at 1 Eastern, it's uh, the Bucks taking on the Hawks. Game 7 of their first round action. Then at 3.30 Eastern, the Lakers host the Jazz. Game 1 of the Western Conference semifinals. It's NBA playoff action on ABC Sunday. Coverage begins at 12.30 Eastern with GMC Sierra NBA Countdown. Back here at Kansas Speedway, on board with race leader by 5.6 seconds, Scott Dixon. He is uh, turning this into the Scott Dixon Show. We can tell you three cars uh, got various violations during that first round of green flag pit stops. The 8 of E.J. Vizo, the 36 of uh, Bertrand Baguette, and the 66 of Jay Howard. And Vizo, at the point where he got his penalty, had come out of the mix in fifth. Will Power, uh, with that extended stop, ends up dropping all the way back to 17th as he is now a lap down. There you see him right behind Mike Conway, who's also a lap down. Only 14 cars on the lead lap right now. Jamie Little? Well, I just want to update what happened with Will Power. You know, we've been talking about this guy so far this season. This was the first pit stop he's had on an oval in a long time. And what happened is he overshot his pit box. We'll watch the replay here and see exactly. You see he's a little too far up. His nose is actually over that white line. Now you see the fuel hose up to the left. It was stretched so long. They had a hard time actually inserting it into the car. And that cost him, guys. He went a lap down. So mistake by just a few inches cost you an awful lot out on the racetrack. And Will Power will now have to try and fight his way back from the 17th. Now, we mentioned it very briefly at the top of the broadcast. There is now an oval champion and a road course champion to be decided this year, as well as the overall champion. 
and of Will Power, of course, could be the favorite for that road course championship, considering what we've seen so far. I think so, and he absolutely understands that, and he was very excited about having the possibility of winning that championship within a championship, but make no mistake about it, all the drivers out there are after the overall IZOD IndyCar Championship this season. So as Will Power continues one lap down in 17th, there is your race leader, Scott Dixon, and he has now opened up a six-second lead. Scott, I mean, right now he is turning laps much, much quicker than everybody else. Consistently in the 210 range and not having any problem at doing that, and I think the other guys are having problems around traffic a little bit. He got through traffic once he had that little bobble with his car, Marty, and then at this point now, he's got clear sailing up ahead of him. You saw the gap to second place, Dario Franchitti. Then in third is that man right there, Ryan Briscoe. Behind him is teammate from Team Penske, Elio Castroneves. And then you're going to have to drop even further back, almost about five seconds to be exact, to catch fifth place, Vitor Mira. And that rounds out your top five here at Kansas. Now, we mentioned the fact that these guys have the push to pass. It gives you 12 seconds of extra horsepower. And Elio Castroneves just used his, we can tell you. He now has 18 left. The top three cars have only used it once. You get a total of 20. There's Milka Duno right in front there as she is a lap down. Racing sort of spreading out now as we have been lean, mean, and green since the drop of the green flag. But Vitor Mira, there you see how far back uh, we had to go to find him. He's now 14 seconds behind the race lead, but still a big day for A.J. Foyt Racing. Vince? Indeed, and it's interesting because A.J. Foyt is actually not here. He's at the Kentucky Derby, one of those rare instances where A.J. doesn't make it to a race, and he uh, made that phone call earlier today to see how things were going, and the guys were very happy to tell A.J. that things were going just fine without him. I, I think A.J. took that in stride. Certainly happy the way that uh, Vitor is running, and they did not make many changes. They just made a half a turn of front wing to give Vitor a little more uh, flexibility in his in, in cockpit changes as you see that ninth place back on your screen. Yeah, it was ninth place with uh, Mario Mirage in the 32. Hideki Muto right there is under attack from Takuma Sato, and Sato in 11th. This is his first time ever in an oval race. And he had his finger on the push to pass there to try to make a move past Hideki Muto, but did not get it done. He's going to learn as he gets more experience on the oval to time it correctly. He didn't look like he had the car set up in a position that he could actually take advantage of that push to, push to pass. And what he needs to do is to have a run on him, make sure it's clear ahead and then push it just when he's getting into the draft so he can actually get himself up and around the car in front. It gives you 12 seconds of additional horsepower and then it takes 10 seconds to recycle before you can use it again. Checking in on the uh, last car on the lead lap, 14th place right now is Danica Patrick waiting for her to come into view because she's about to go a lap down right behind her there in the red number nine. Here he comes. Your worst nightmare right now, Scott Dixon. And Marty, she knows that because she will hear on the radio that from the spotters and from her pit box that the leader is behind her, so she'll push as hard as she possibly can. She's done a great job now by getting a car just in between her and the leader, Scott Dixon, who you ride on board with right now. But Dixon is going very quickly to be able to catch up to her. She can see in the mirror. She can see the car coming. And as a driver, you try to find just a little bit more out of the car through the turns because you don't want to go a lap down. And it has given her a bit of breathing space. We just heard her on the onboard again having to breathe that throttle. Yeah, and when you roll off the throttle just a little bit, that's when your car is not really too good, maybe in one particular spot. But when you lift off at a huge amount like she's doing, that means she's really pushing the car and trying to get a lot out of it and really taking it to extremes. Now, right behind her teammate, she's going to look to go around Marco Andretti. That's the car in front. She needs to time that right, and she did not, and she got out of the gas because she got the dirty air from the car in front of Marcos. And around on the outside, the right-hand side, you just saw Scott Dixon go past. So Scott Dixon has now led nine of the ten oval races last season. He led the most laps in five of them, and he won four of them, and he's leading here. We are under our first caution here. It came out on lap number 73. E.J. Vizo got loose, slid up towards the wall, and unfortunately touched it. 
You see the car on the top of the screen, just a little bit too high, not down in the black section where all the rubber is. The car starts to walk itself up, and when you feel the car start to move like that, you can't turn the steering wheel very much. You can't get off the gas. You can't touch the brakes. You're just along for the ride. You can see as it starts to enter up into the gray, you can see the dust start to come off, and then you are sucked just up into the wall, and so he is out of the event. Suspension on the right front, as you can see, is uh, bent badly, and the damage there. So how many cars do you think uh, take advantage of the pit stop because it hasn't been that long ago since we uh, did pit. Well, we've got uh, about 26, so I would think that uh, anytime there's a yellow here in the oval, I think you've got to bring it in and you've got to take advantage of it because you're going to go down a lap. So we'll wait to see what the leader does, and as a driver that's behind the leader, then you turn around and you make the follow, and that's what's going on. And the tough break for Marco Andretti. He's going to have to stay out. He was the last one just passed to go a lap down. We have 12 cars on the lead lap, and uh, they're pulling in the pit road. Check out our Apex Brazil triple pits. Jamie? Well, it was such a short stint. The cars didn't really change. I know that leader Scott Dixon said his car is better. They made an air pressure adjustment on the first round, said he was better. In the middle, Dario Franchini getting fresh tires, filling it up with fuel. No changes for him. Ryan Briscoe was your pole sitter. No changes for him. Four tires all down and away. Looks to be all cleared. Clean stops. Marty? All right. Thank you, Jamie. As uh, we see our race off uh, pit road, Scott Dixon, Dario Franchini come out where they went in. Elio Castroneves picks up one. Ryan Briscoe drops one. And boy, four picked up by Hot Ryan Hunter Ray. Up to six. How about that? We're going side by side. Select Izod IndyCar driver. Driver selected Tony Kanaan. Select race transport. Mission finish first. Mark on the 2010 Indianapolis 500 mile race, May 30th. ESPN's coverage of the IZOD IndyCar Series at Kansas on ABC, presented by IZOD, the official apparel sponsor of the IZOD IndyCar Series, available at Macy's, and Firestone. The first name in Indy racing. All right. All right, a lot of things have happened during this uh, first caution period. Coming off of pit lane, watch the three cars that are basically going to try and squeeze into a space that won't handle three cars. And on the far left, it is Milka Duno. And keep an eye on right here, Takuma Sato, the sandwich in that meet. And she should understand. There's a car beside her. She has to look in her mirrors, and also the spotter should be telling her what's going on. And so for Dan Weldon right now, very lucky for him, he did not get taken out in this also. And I got to believe there's going to be some adjustments made in those uh, front steering tie rods, possibly when you get a bump like that. And then this is what happened with Ryan Briscoe. He's only got three wheels. What happened, Jamie? Well, they definitely had a miscue, and they thought they had some damage on their front wing, so they brought him in for the second time, put new tires on it, and made a front wing adjustment. It was kind of unclear. He just brought it in and said he thought he had damage. So Briscoe 
now comes back out in the 11th position. We only have a total of 16 cars right now on the lead lap. Some of those are, are those that stayed out, including Marco Andretti, Matos, Will Power, and Mike Conway. And lucky for Briscoe, otherwise, if this had been underneath a green, he would have went down a lap. That's right. His race could have been over. Uh, let's check in with Rick DeBrule. He's caught up with EJ Vizo. Yeah, very frustrated, EJ Vizo. You had a great start, started 16th and moved up very quickly. What happened? Well, we were running very fast, and I'm very sorry with the team, with the people that support my career. I just did a mistake. I went a little bit wide and just hit the marbles trying to overtake Matos. car was amazingly fast. Uh, I think that we definitely have a huge potential in ovals, and uh, we need to get better in street and road courses, but it's just one of those things, trying, and uh, very disappointed. You had the drive through penalty. Were you trying a little too hard to catch up? I was not really trying any harder. I knew it was uh, more than three quarters of the race left. And uh, it's, I, I mean, every lap you do over there, every other lap, you start getting the track gets a lot worse with the marbles. And that's that was the case. I was overtaking Matos, and I just lost the front and brushed the wall. All right, a frustrated EJ Viso hoping for better things at Indy. And they are doing the wave around right now. So uh, those cars that uh, stayed out there will get back on the tail end of the lead lap, and we uh, mentioned already it was Marco Andretti, Rafa Matos, Will Power, and Mike Conway, just in case you missed it. Our green flag run was 73 total laps. The longest here was back in 2007. We went 93 laps before having a caution. And you're saying what's the record for fewest cautions? Two. So uh, it's not uncommon to have very few cautions here at Kansas as we get a little bit closer to the halfway point. Well, we've heard that uh, Scott Dixon right now is very happy with his car. They made an air pressure adjustment, so obviously he believes that's the little small things that he needs done. Be interesting to see if uh, Frankiti, for instance, has made some changes to hopefully get some more speed out of his car. And the Kastronov and Kanan, both guys that don't seem to get the front a couple miles an hour right now. Let's listen in on Dario's uh, team communication. You know, and what he's basically saying is reporting back to the pit box and he's telling his team that there's a lot of rubber on the outside of the racing line. You saw EJ Wiesel get up there. That will go to the Brian Barnhart up in control. Maybe in the next yellow, they'll bring out the sweepers and get the, some of those marbles off. All right, Dixon, Frank Keedy, Castro Nevis, Kanan, Ryan Hunter-Ray, who is using the push to pass on the restart. So is Frank Keedy. He's tabbed the button. And we're back to green flag racing here at Kansas. through the corner. Are they going to try and make it three? It looks like they will further back in the field. That's Marias in the 32. Now he goes low. The Lotus machine, you see at the back of that one grouping of Sato, he's probably getting a big learning experience right now because of all those cars that are in front of him, giving him all that disturbed air. He'll be feeling things that he's really never felt before. Just the buffeting inside the cockpit that he will feel. The light steering wheel occasionally as he's now right behind the number six of Ryan Briscoe. Remember, Briscoe has dropped all the way back to 11th position. His next target is Mario Marias, but he's got to fend off the five of Takuma Sato. And he also has to have some patience now because Briscoe's got a faster car. He has to go around the outside, the high side, but he has to have patience for the guys that are running in front of him. Looking back to the front, Scott Dixon continues to run well, but Dario Franchitti appears to be closing. It's down to three-tenths of a second. So maybe some changes he made during the pit stop works. You also have some onboard aids the driver can move around, and that's the weight jacker and the roll bar. Some driver adjustments. Now look what's going on here. Kanan trying to get his nose underneath the three of Elio Castroneves, and Castroneves just saw him there at the very last minute and just avoided that collision. Now that's Danica Patrick right in front, but remember, she is a lap down in 17th position. You look out the back, and a little bit further back, you've got the Kanan, and Ryan hunter Ray has now moved into the top five. And Kanan looking to get underneath Castro Nevis. Here's the view from Ryan's car. As we watch all this, it's settled down for the moment. What do you have, Jamie? Well, Ryan Hunter Ray's car has just come to life. He started off loose. They came in and made an adjustment on that first round of stops. This last stop, his crew was smoking. They gained him four positions. He's going forward. He's a happy camper. Right behind him.
him is Alex Tagliani, who's also looking to make a statement today, Vince Welch. Well, and this team has had a very good uh, run all weekend. They were fifth in the uh, qualifying order, and that was a big boost to this team, and they have stayed up toward the front all day long. They made a slight air pressure adjustment on their first stop because Tags had a little bit of a push, but they did not even make any changes at all in their second stop. Just gave him fresh tires. He likes the car. He's never won on an oval 11 years in major open wheel racing, but he has been very, very racy today. This is a good team. Fast is their nickname or the name of their team, and they've got a fast driver here today. Right behind Alex is Vitor Mira, Hideki Muto in eighth. John Andretti is in ninth position, and rounding out the top ten is Mario Marias. The race leader, though, is Scott Dixon. As we're going to go side by side, there you see the top five. We're ten laps from halfway. Hello? Danica, where have you been? Oh, Grandma, I've been busy, you know? Racing, GoDaddy girl. Oh, I built my own online store with GoDaddy. Really? Let me see. Grandmasauction.com. Hey, aren't those Grandpa's golf clubs? Mm -hmm. Grandma needs her bingo money. See more now at GoDaddy.com. My boyfriend has one. Uh, my girlfriend. My older sister. She has two kids. My college roommate who lives up north. My mom. My mom. Uh, my neighbors. Our neighbors. My daughter. My daughter. We were in the same class in elementary school. My boyfriend. My parents. Our parents. My, lo my lovely wife. And my husband has one. Yeah, as well as a fellow I work with. My girlfriend, she moved out east. I'm a city girl. Everybody knows somebody who loves a Honda. Who do you know? ABC Monday. I've been dying to eat here. Well, evidently, you're not the only one. TV's most notorious chef bites the big one. Did you always have sex in the restaurant? Ow. It's a recipe for disaster with culinary king Rocco Despirito. I ought to punch you in the face, Castle. Eight suspects, one saucy dish. You're hot for Castle. You want to make little Castle babies. He can hear us. And a very sweet ending. ABC's Castle. All new Monday at 10, 9 central on ABC. The Indianapolis 500, Elio Castroneves tries to become the fourth four-time winner. There may be five women drivers to make the field. We've got 40 entries already for 33 spots. Can it get any better than this? The greatest spectacle in racing, the Indianapolis 500, Saturday, May 30th, noon Eastern on ABC. The telecast presented by GoDaddy.com. And in the rearview mirror of uh, Danica Patrick's car is Elio Castroneves. As he is running in third position, Danica a lap down in 17th. We have 16 cars on the lead lap. Right now, Danica's thinking, how did I get a lap down? Because she's being able to run the pace almost of the leaders, but obviously enough to be able to keep Elio behind you. So that's a difficult situation for a driver when you're a lap down. Andretti Autosport teammates Tony Kanaan and Ryan hunter Ray locked in a battle. That is for fourth. Vince? It's been a very it's been a very solid run for Tony Kanaan so far. Remember guys before the race he said the balance was good but they just don't have the speed. That's really been the case so far today. They don't have the speed. Michael Andretti told me just a moment ago that those up front do but they've got a very good balance with the race car and that's allowing TK to maneuver through some of the traffic. That's been one of the main issues up and down pit lane today is when some of these cars get in a three or four uh, car pack their balance goes away but Kanaan's has been steady in those circumstances and that's allowed him to uh, move up several spots, running in the top five. Pretty good for a guy who didn't like his race car, huh? Yeah, for, for both of them. Jamie, what do you have? Well, and his teammate Ryan hunter Ray, who's right behind him, told me yesterday one of the main factors of his success this year with this brand-new team for him is Tony Kanaan. He said the two are working together so well and that their driving styles are very similar. He was able to use 
His setup yesterday, as you see a battle here, Ryan Briscoe's on the move, but that's the 12 of Will Power making his way up after having a bad pit stop earlier on. But Ryan Hunter Ray definitely working with the 11 car as they're trying to move to the front. And Will Power uh, 13th right now as we have reached halfway and we've only had the one caution. Don't mean to jinx anything, but you're on board with Dan Weldon, who we thought would be a real player in this mix, but he's a lap down in 19th right now. And hey Marty, when they're talking about the balance of the cars from the reports that we're getting from the pit lane, the balance itself, when their car starts to change from the fuel load and the tires start to go away just a little bit, that sometimes means the front starts to wash out on you or the back end wants to come around just a little bit. And the drivers have those driver aids again inside the car, the weight jacker and also the roll bars to hopefully combat some of those situations that happen. But sometimes you run out of adjustments and then you just have to drive the car. Vince, you've got more on Weldon's situation? Well, they really dug themselves a hole early on. They did not like their first set of tires. For some reason, it just did not mesh with what the, the setup was on their car. When they came in on that first stop, they dropped the tire pressure a pound on each of the corners. That's a big adjustment. And Weldon says the car is much better since then, but he's got quite a hole to dig out of now. Yeah, he does. As uh, we mentioned, we are past halfway. Here is Danica Patrick, a lap down right in front of Elio Castro Nevis, and closing quickly now is Tony Kanaan. And Danica stays on the low line, now drifts up a little bit. Oh, that's not going to make Elio happy. They're side by side. Oh, and she knows that she's a lap down, so obviously she is just trying to keep the strong pace going. But Elio right now is saying, come on, give me a little bit of a break. And he's letting her know just by weaving the car from the one side to the other. She's off the gas because the car doesn't work there. Now, proper etiquette really is maybe just to breathe the car a little bit and let that competitor go by because you are not in the race right now. They are still side by side through the corner. Tony Kanan trying to give a little space there just in case something happens. And again, Elio cannot get the pass done. And she's right in the middle of the track. He looked to go inside, decides to try the high line once again. The guy that's looking right now, lurking in the back, is Kanan. And he seemed to be able to stretch away from Ryan Hunter Ray, who has since been passed by Tagliani. On the left of your screen, Marco Andretti has pulled into pit lane. So he's getting fresh firestones. And again, on the right side, Elio cannot get the job done. What he needs to do is what, when she has a problem keeping the car in the bottom of the track, to have enough of a run going around the outside of her to hold her down when she comes out of the turn so her speed is slow. Looks like he might have got that done that time. She seems to be able to go down the straight just a little bit better than Elio. Could be a different downforce level on the cars. They're both running 26.4 second laps. Rick, you've got more? It has not been for a lack of effort that Danica is back there. In fact, when she came in after her first stint, they took the tires off. The right rear was actually down to the cords. Setup was that far off. She was working it too hard. They put it back on, sent her back out. It's been frustrating, though, and you can see, though, she's not giving up. She's working those tires. Well, the problem is, though, even if she can hold off Castro Nevis, there's two guys in front of Castro Nevis that before she can even get back on the lead lap, all of a sudden, Will Power now comes in for his second round of pit stops. The action continues with Elio trying to get past Danica Patrick. This is when he cuts beside her. He's got to hold her down so she doesn't start to walk up the racetrack a little bit. Jamie Little? Well, you see Will Power they're telling him to reset the fuel. Four tires reminded him to back it up in his pit box. His car was just not handling right. They felt like they had nothing to lose just to come in and pit under green. Much better pit stop, and you can see now that uh, Danica Patrick has surrendered, and uh, Elio Castroneves and Tony Kanan have gotten past. And now she's uh, got other traffic uh, behind her as well. So your race leader is Scott Dixon by 1.5 seconds. Stay with us. We'll be back with more after this message from our ABC stations. Back here in Kansas, Danica Patrick bring tires. Minor air adjustment pressure on the left front, but other than that, they've sent her back out. So Danica, the first car one lap down when she came in in 17th position, will now come back out into the battle as we have uh, passed halfway, completed 115 laps. 
And with 85 to go, there is your race leader coming out of four, heading for the tri-oval with Scott Dixon now leading Dario Franchitti by two seconds. Elio Castroneves third, and then Tony Kanaan, Alex Tagliani fifth, Hideki Muto sixth, Ryan Briscoe seventh, Ryan Hunter Ray has dropped back to eighth. And uh, as you look at our Firestone lap leaders, Team Target Ganassi has now totaled more laps led in this one race than they had the first four. So a big rebound today for the team in red and we should say blue. And probably very happy, obviously, be back on oval. But in this last run that we've seen since the last pit stops, when it's we first came out, we had Frankiti running the same pace as Scott Dixon, but as the run has gone on, obviously Dixon's car has stayed the same and Frankiti's car is starting to back up a little bit. So we'll watch that. That might play out here at the very end of the race after pit stops towards the run for the checkered flag. Well, things have settled down and uh, no active passing going on. So let's go up to speed. First up is Jamie Little. A little breathing room down here with the leaders right now. Scott Dixon not saying a whole lot about the car. As we said, he only made that air pressure adjustment early on. Car has been very balanced. Now, he told me he's thrilled to be back at an oval, has not won yet this year. This team, Ganassi, has won the last three races here. He was very confident coming in. Now, Dario Franchitti, his teammate in the 10 car, right behind him. You're right, Scott, his car did go away a little bit. He actually had a little understeer and a little oversteer, but on the last stop, he made no adjustments on pit road. He's doing it all in the cockpit, and it seems to be working out, running around in second. Behind him, Elio Castroneves. He is thrilled to be back on the oval. We have a caution. We have debris on the track. Marty? All right. Thanks, Jamie. We'll get back to our up to speed as our second caution flag has now come out. We have uh, debris on the racetrack. And there you can see that's not something you want to run over, Scott. Well, it looks like a piece of an end plate from a wing. So we'll have to see what car that has been uh, removed from. But uh, this is going to turn into a scenario now for drivers to go ahead and make some more changes on the car, try to improve the car during this next round of pit stops. And there you can see it gives you a better angle. It's at, right at the exit of pit lane in turn one. And we had active pit stops rolling through. So obviously, uh, league officials said that's not a good spot. So that lead that uh, Scott Dixon had evaporates again, but right now you've got to believe he's feeling pretty confident. He certainly has a strong car over the full fuel run. What Frank is going to try and do now, I'm sure he's been speaking with his team, telling them what's going on. They can see what's happening with the race car through the telemetry system. They'll be coming up with some changes to make in the car here now to hopefully improve it so he can be more competitive over the duration of that run. Scott, uh, remember when Dario Franchitti on the radio uh, mentioned that we need to get the uh, top line swept? Well, look at what's out on the track. So race car officials or Indy Racing League officials are going to sweep the uh, track and try and get the uh, marbles off of that high line, which uh, should benefit some guys who can uh, run up a little higher and make uh, the racing a little closer. Well, certainly even on uh, on the starts itself and on the restart, especially you're going to see guys drawing two or three wide, and that's why they're asking for that situation to be cleaned up. And we've got enough time before they come in for pit stops. Let's talk about the all-new ABC Sunday 9 o'clock Eastern as it's the betrayal and the danger. It's moved back to Wisteria Lane, and if you're looking for trouble, you've come to the right neighborhood. It's ABC's Desperate Housewives. It's all new Sunday at 9 Eastern, 8 Central on ABC. So we are being told now by uh, league officials that uh, pit stops can occur as pit lane is officially open and it looks like everybody has set out for this stop here as uh, we've completed uh, 121 laps. Scott Dixon leads him down. Let's set it up and Jamie Little, you're up. And Scott Dixon on the top of your screen there, top left. No changes that he has said as of now. The car has been really balanced as we've been reporting and it's shown with his performance on the track. Four Firestone Firehawks in the middle. Dario Franchitti, he's been adjusting from the cockpit. They're going to load up fuel and four tires. You see Elio Castroneva said his car is a bit loose. Look for a front wing change adjustment there. Top two are down and away. Elio Castroneva is 8.9. He is down and away with a little longer than the Ganassi boys. Race off pit road just like the first round. It was uh, Dixon Frankiti. Then Tony Kanan picked up a spot. Hideki Muto picks up two. Elio drops two. And there you can see Tagliani drops one. Ryan Hunterway picks up one. And Takuma Sato back into 10th with two gained. Let's go back and show you the stop as uh, what it looks like from the right front tire changer. 
no problems here. The tire comes off, it goes on, and he watches his mechanic on the right front. As soon as he says it's time to go, off you are. And that was Ricky Davis giving us the view. And there's Ricky with the uh, camera right on top of his helmet. Thanks, Ricky. It was fun to watch as uh, the pit stops have concluded here at Kansas. It balances you. It fills you with energy. And it gives you what you're looking for to live a more natural life in a convenient two bar pack. This is Nature Valley. Delicious granola bars made with 100% natural ingredients. Nature Valley, 100% natural, 100% delicious. At the Indy 500, drivers put complete trust in their cars. But when you're out on the road trying to make it to work, are you sure you can trust your motor oil? Put your trust in Peak Performance Motor Oil. Formulated to protect against thermal breakdown, Peak is the only motor oil tough enough to be the official oil of the Indianapolis 500. Whether you cover 500 miles in a few hours or it takes hours to get to work, you can count on Peak. When you peak, you win. If you want something, then what are you doing? Come upstairs and find out. Go for it. I've got two nice big ones right here. All new ABC Sunday. You're the one Carlos is having an affair with. If you want nothing but trouble. I'm afraid of him. You've come to the right neighborhood. Hey, stop it! ABC's Desperate Housewives. All new Sunday, 9, 8 central on ABC. Air travel is incredibly safe. I know, but at the end of the day, it is still a building on its side being thrown from one place to another. ABC Comedy Wednesday. An all-new modern family goes on a family vacation. I forgot my wallet. I can't get on the plane without my ID. If I can get you home and back before the plane takes off, let's go. That's if everyone gets on board. Yellow. You're supposed to be here with me. Oh, no. My keys. Oh, no. ABC's Modern Family. All new Wednesday, 9, 8 central on ABC Comedy Wednesday. Back here at the Kansas Speedway, our race leader is Scott Dixon with Dario Franchitti, Tony Kanaan, Hideki Muto, Elio Castroneves, your top five. And then, with only 12 cars on the lead lap, let's go on through the entire group. Alex Tagliani, Ryan Hunter Ray, seventh, Ryan Briscoe, John Andretti in ninth, Takumo Sato, tenth, then Vitor Mira and Mario Marias. So that resets all the cars that are on the lead lap. But I have to tell you, folks, uh, 92 of these laps so far have been led by Scott Dixon. And he definitely looks, Scott Goodyear, to have the dominant car. Well, the dominant car, and you know, you look at it, he's only had uh, one use of the overtake pass button. So that tells you how impressive his car is working for him. The nine has just been incredibly quick in the pits throughout this whole day. And we're going to show you a replay here. And let's just watch how now quick they are. Straight on the board. Straight in Jack, here. Straight Jack in. Jack the fueler here in the left-hand side. Click it in. Away they go. The tires are being changed. And then when it's time to go, off it is. Those two guys are doing a great job. The four tire changers are doing an excellent job. The crew's looking on saying, hey, I've made TV. There you go. Good job, guys. And that comes down to the driver coming in, Marty, stopping on his marks and making sure that he's put the car in the correct placement. We saw earlier today Will Power having that difficulty and how hard it was for the crew to do the work and service that car, especially with the fuel nozzle. And these are things that are done throughout the week with the teams in their garage area back in Indianapolis, and they practice pit stops throughout the week so they have perfection here on weekends. Six cars got the waiver and we'll give you that update in just a moment. But first, let's check in with Jamie Little. Well, after that last pit stop, Scott Dixon's talking to his team about pit strategy and how many more times they may have to pit. I would think uh, it would have to be uh, Locust, 
flood, pestilence, and everything else for everybody not to have to stop Scott. Tempo. Well, 73 laps left to go and 48 to 50 on a, a fuel run. That's probably going to be the case. Well, let's give you the wave arounds. It was Will Power, the 24 of Mike Conway, Marco Andretti, the 66 of Jay Howard, Rafa Matos, and Danica Patrick. So they are now all on the tail end of the lead lap. We mentioned already Dixon, Frankiti, Kanan, Muto, Castroneves. That is your top five as the pace car is pulled off, and we will be going back to green flag racing the next time by. And the group after that is pretty stellar also. Tagliani, Hunter Ray, and Briscoe, and John Andretti, very impressive, all the way up to ninth. Look at the pit stops that Ryan Hunter Ray has gotten today. Picked up four on the first, and then one more on the second. And he's done a lot of it, the rest of it on his own with some great driving. And a lot of times when your car is not very fast by yourself or in qualifying, we mentioned this earlier in the show how he just was so down last night when we spoke to him, didn't think that he had a race car. And it, it, very disturbing because he's working very hard to continue with the series throughout the whole year. He's currently third in the points championship and coming off of a win at Long Beach. His whole focus is to be competitive. And uh, he did not think he would be today. But when cars are on the racetrack, you get that advantage of the toe around there, I think it's helped them. Well, and we should point out, we had to go one more lap uh, because the 32 and the 12 were not in the proper alignment. And also, I would need to correct myself, those cars on the wave around, they were two laps down. Now they are now one lap down. So that uh, still means we have 12 cars on the lead lap. Here we go. Ramp up the speed. Green, green, green. And you heard it. We're back to green flag racing, and all five of the top five cars are hitting that push to pass. Top three sort of pull out like they have on the other restarts today. Further back, there you see Ryan Briscoe in the six. He's got his hands full with a couple of cars surrounding him. There's the group up front, the top five. And there's where you see your log jam, the 43. John Andretti alongside of Takuma Sato, and that is for position. And give Sato a lot of credit because he's not really had a great scenario so far this year as Tagliani now makes a swerving move and goes underneath Ryan Hunter Ray. You see that black and white BMW car on the bottom. Ryan Hunter Ray now on the high side. And if you're going to make a pass, if you can get underneath the driver in front, you might just get it completed. Vitor Mir in the 14. He's looking to go underneath. There's no room there because Sato is already in that spot. These four cars side by side on board with Andretti. That's Mario Marias and Marias going by. So all of a sudden Andretti's car is backing up. And he is a driver who has used all his push to pass opportunities so far, has used all 20 of them. Maybe he might rethink that when he gets to the Indianapolis 500 next month because in the scenario when you come down to a run towards the checker with only a few laps left to go, you want to have just a little extra possibility of pushing that button to get going. What's the latest on John Andretti, Rick? Well, early on, he was pretty frustrated with the car. He said he just couldn't pass anybody. He wanted a wing adjustment. But think about this. Once again, this goal race, his only goal was just to get laps down, to get comfortable, both with the team and with the car. All things considered, when you look at what he's doing right now in terms of how he's running, this is a very impressive trial run. Oh, and that was so close. As you finish up, he went below the line, knew he was out of bounds, pulled out of the throttle, and then still almost went, ran up the hill. Well, as he goes into that turn, Marty, that white line, that's the hinge point between the banking and the flat of the track and he certainly got not only caught on that but the two cars in front just sort of washed out the front wing for him and that car went up the road and lucky to keep it going. And we need to correct one thing our data on uh, John Andretti's push to pass is incorrect so we don't know exactly for some reason it is showing zero but that's not necessarily the case we have been told by our data group the others that we can have told you about are accurate for example Scott Dixon our race leader still has 18 pushes out of the 20 remaining so Andretti continues running in 12th he's the last car on the lead lap. Marco Andretti and Dan Weldon. Now remember, Marco is the first car a lap down. Weldon right behind him, that is, for 13th on the racetrack. Dan 
Jim Weldon. We thought he might be fighting for the race lead. That has not been the case today. It has been all about Scott Dixon for 103 laps. Ryan Briscoe's led 31. Dario Franchitti has led two. It's Dixon, Franchitti, Tony Kanan now third, Hideki Muto fourth, Elio Castroneves fifth. We go side by side. Select IZOD IndyCar driver. Driver selected, Ryan Hunter Ray. Select race transport. Mission finish first. Fastest drivers in the world. See who wins at racetothepathy.com. Take me out to the brickyard. Take me out with the crowds. Buy me some earplugs and a checkered cap. I don't care if we ever get back. Take me out to the brickyard. Take me out where it's loud. This place has a history that stirs the soul. A hundred year drama that never gets old. Let me root, root, root over the engine's roar. Let me cheer every driver and car. For it's 300, 400, 500 miles around the old brickyard. Can a smartphone reach the four corners of the earth? Can it make unlimited Skype-to-Skype -Skype calls to any country without using any minutes? Hello? I am anyone on Skype. Droid can with Skype Mobile, one of thousands of apps that can run with other apps from the ever-expanding Android market. When there's no limit to what Droid gets, there's no limit to what Droid does. Right now, buy a 3G smartphone and get a second one free, like the Droid, only from Verizon. Just another perfect day I think I'll walk this way with the trees I do sing I'm feeling part of everything And all my troubles seem to fade away Skies look brighter I The hybrid for everyone is here The Insight Designed and priced for us all from Honda Welcome back to Kansas Speedway. The NBA playoffs continue on ABC Sunday. First at 1 Eastern, it's the Bucks and the Hawks. Game 7, first round action. Then at 3.30, it's the Lakers and the Jazz. Game 1 of the Western Conference semifinals. The NBA playoffs on ABC Sunday. Our coverage begins at 12.30 Eastern with GMC Sierra NBA Countdown. Not much of a battle up front. It has been the Scott Dixon show. He's a half a second ahead of Dario Franchitti. And Marty, since that last pit stop, we've had just about 22 laps, and I've been watching the speed here, and Franchitti starting just to slow down just a little bit, like a tenth of a mile an hour per lap, and this is when Dixon seems to be able to stay strong and consistent, and now we're starting to see Franchitti back up towards where he was before. Well, and that's been the trend all race long. He is stronger as the run gets longer. This is a great battle on the track right now for fourth. Hideki Muto has it. Ryan Briscoe wants it. Rick? Hideki Muto came in here with the setup that they used for Graham Rahal. Now, he liked the road course setup. He wasn't so comfortable with the ovals. He qualified well. At one point, he slid back to 10th. Now he's worked his way back up to 4th. He's been having this battle with Ryan Briscoe for about the last three laps. He's much more comfortable on the low side. His spotter, Lee Orbach, coaching him all the way around, making sure, telling him it's his line. Hold it, guard it, and then go after Tony Kanaan. He keeps fighting him off. Well, and remember that 06 with Graham Rahal behind the wheel sat on the pole at this race last year in the Newman Haas racing machine right now, doing a great job as Hideko, as there's Ryan Briscoe pushing that uh, push to pass button again. He's now down to 10. He's pushed it four times that we've been able to watch during this uh, battle, and he has yet to be able to complete the pass. 
Well, he's got to also sit there and look to see that. I might not have anything for the first two guys, the leader and Frank Keedy, but, you know, maybe possibly for Kanan. But Kanan's not really stretching away there too much. And uh, when he tries to use his push to pass, he's used 10 of them so far. Couldn't get it done, but you want to leave some for the end, as we talked about before. Vince Welsh, you have something on Tony Kanan? But Kanan says the wind has really been an issue down in three and four, and we've seen several of the cars dealing with that today. But as far as the balance of TK's car, he really likes it. They didn't make any changes with the car at all on the last pit stop. Says he's got a little bit of an understeer, but he can work with the tools inside his cockpit to help him where he needs it. The main thing is they just don't have the speed to contend with those two Ganassi cars up front. Remember how TK told us in the pre-race the car just wasn't very good, and he told me earlier, he said, I have no magic wand. I can't drive it beyond what it's got, but it seems like TK has maybe put a little magic on it today. Running third, much better than what they anticipated coming in. And a little bit further back, Takuma Sato may have found a new discipline. This is amazing, folks. His first ever oval race in an Indy car, and he is sixth. And the guy that was stuck in the middle there was Jay Howard aboard that service central machine. He was didn't have anywhere to go. He had to watch him go past both on the right and left side. Castro Nevis gets back around him as Sato hits the button. That's what it means when the light goes green. And he is etched ahead of him. Now it's back to side by side. Who's going to take the spot? This is fun to watch. And I don't think any of us would have picked Sato as the guy to watch. Rick, what, what do you have down there? Well, actually, he's been pretty comfortable with the car. They haven't made any major changes, except they had to replace that front wing because he got together with Milka Duno, as you saw earlier, coming out of the pit lane. He started 11th, went back to 19th at one point, and now has worked his way back up through the field. And as you can see, for a guy who's never run on an oval before, and I mean ever before this week, he is doing a phenomenal job. The goal was to get comfortable. He's done it. And Castro Nevis just used the push to pass to open up some ground on Sato. He is now down to 12 pushes of the 20. Again, it gives you about an additional horsepower and a half, about, uh, or mile and a half hour, more than seven to nine horsepower. Let's get more on uh, Elio Castro Nevis. Jamie? Well, it's interesting. You watch Elio. He ran behind Takuma Sato for a little while. Before this race, Elio told me this is a great place to learn these rookie drivers, what they're capable of and how you can race them. Go into the Indy 500. That's what it's all about. Elio is sitting out there. His car is pretty good. It's a little loose, but I think he's watching these rookie drivers and just learning how he can race them. All right. Thanks, Jamie. As there is uh, the numbers on Elio right now, as it is uh, a six second margin to the race leader, Scott Dixon. But the two Penske cars uh, that are on the lead lap, Will Power is a lap down in 15th. You saw them there running nose to tail. Everybody is trying to catch that man right there. Scott Dixon has opened up a 1.3 second lead over Dario Franchitti. And the window is now open for that final round of pit stops. So who's going to win this? A former winner in the name of Tony Kanaan started the day with a car that he wasn't really happy with. Dario Franchitti, defending series champion, or Scott Dixon, the man who won here last year. After this message and a word from our ABC stations, we're back. Forty laps remaining here at uh, race number five of the 2010 IZOD IndyCar Series. We're at Kansas Speedway, where it has been the Scott Dixon show for the most part. Scott has now led 127 laps. We told you right before the break, the window has opened. Here's Marco Andretti. Maybe his car is not working well. Remember, he's also some laps down. So for him, maybe make the car feel a little bit better for him. Make some changes. See if he can improve it. Get some information for the race in Indianapolis. And Ryan Briscoe also peels off. And uh, Jamie, uh, his car got a little loose. He lost several positions right before this stop. And he did. Last pit stop, he put stuck tires that he qualified on. That helped him to get up to speed and make a couple passes. But his car fell off pretty quickly. So they called him in. Just going to put four sticker tires on there this time. Brand new tires fill it up with fuel no adjustments for Ryan Briscoe pressure on these pit crews now because these green flag stops as you look at Tony Kanaan and Hideki Muto former teammates now rivals that is a battle for third on the racetrack Muto really looking good today Kanaan has 14 push to pass elements left 12 for Hideki Muto and here comes Muto coming up on the high side and he's hit the button 
Nice timing, gets a run going through the tri oval, although he was not able to get it done. He swings out going into turns one and two, hopefully to carry the speed and the momentum, was not able to get that completed that time. Let's get more on Hideki Muto from Rick DeBrule. And I talked about the fact that his spotter was up there guiding him through. It's been interesting. He keeps talking about momentum. Make sure you don't lose your momentum. He said, get up on that gearbox, make him worry. Now he's trying to go around the outside. The goal, once again, whatever you do, don't drop back. Don't lose ground to Kanan. Make the move on him if you can. But what the team is telling him to do is at all costs, don't do something that's going to drive you up, make you go back so you get lose touch with Tony Kanan. And you saw they're eight seconds behind the race lead, but don't feel bad. Everybody's behind the race leader by at least two seconds as uh, Scott Dixon continues to pull out the longer this run goes. And this battle continues for fourth position or third position on the racetrack. That is Rafa Matos in front there. And Rafa is three laps down and 23rd position. So he'll give way as Tony Kanan looks to go underneath. And for whatever reason, that wasn't good for Muto because he turned around, got off the gas a major amount. Mario Marias in 11th, the last car on the lead lap. And Rick, we're going to send it your way. Yeah, it's been interesting so far, Mario Marias. Today, the last pit stop, the fuel stuck inside. They almost drove off. He was smart enough to stop as a result. It hurt him in a little bit in time, but he was able to not do any damage. He's been satisfied with the car, saying it was a little bit loose, but they have not been making any adjustments, and they send him back out. No real problems on this one. He really lights up the tires. You can hear him on the limiter as Will Power, our points leader, and see if uh, two times ago, whoops, get it slowed down because you don't want to get busted for speeding. Remember his first pit stop, he was way too far away, and they were extending that fuel hose, and uh, Jamie, he's coming your way. You saw him lift up his hand. He was pulling a tear off from his visor. He said, let us know if you need any changes. They're just trying to get off pit sequence here a little bit. Remember, he had trouble early on, like you mentioned, and he rolls into his pit box, nailing the stop that time. It's going to be fuel, four sticker tires, no changes, willpower, down and away. 8.7 seconds, uh, much better than uh, 9.4 that we saw on the prior stop. Race leader Scott Dixon still out there, and he is uh, in control of this race with 31 laps to go by 2.7 seconds now over Dario Franchitti. Dougie, Dougie, Dougie. What? What are you doing, man? The game's on. I used to watch for the commercials. Thank you. Wardrobe malfunction. Hey. Whoa, is that Danica Patrick? Waiting for her exposure ad to run. You won't see it on TV, but it's on at GoDaddy.com. GoDaddy. GoDaddy. See what happens next at GoDaddy.com. your mark on the 2010 Indianapolis 500 mile race, May 30th. John Forrest will turn 61 this week, but he's not slowing down. The 14 time funny car champion is leading the point with three wins this season. At St. Louis, he's looking for back to back. Larry Dixon leads the top fuel points, three wins this year, but he's never Sunday at 7. 
And that's all on ESPN2, and we'll look forward to that. That's a tough track to handle, get a handle on, as uh, there is Ryan hunter Ray. He was uh, running at about the ninth position as he came in for his last stop. He's got four fresh tires and enough fuel to get him to the last 26 laps. And here again, Scott Dixon still out there. That's Simona Di Silvestro. She's doing exactly what we talked about the pre-race. She's just logging laps, her very first oval race. Justin Wilson, another guy who has two podium finishes. He brings his car in and the 22 running in 19th position, but he still has some things he needs to learn. There are three laps down on this track today. And I don't think those cars, his car and also his teammate car, Mike Conway, I'm not sure that they actually came here and came off the trailer as quick as they need to be. John Andretti getting some service work done. We talked about him earlier just coming in here for a race warm up for the Indianapolis 500 coming up four weeks ago, to, four weeks tomorrow and he's done a great job here this weekend. He is running in the top 10 right now as he pulls back out onto the racetrack. Tony Kanaan peels off from his third place position as he will now make his last stop and Hideki Muto comes in as well. Four, Four tires, no changes it looks and then Vince Welsh. No changes for Tony Kanaan. He's been very happy with his race car. Not as fast as he'd like, but the balance has been good. He's been on the podium here the last two years. He's got a shot at being back on the podium again this year. And he's out ahead of Hideki Muto. Here comes second place as Dario Franchitti pulls in, Jamie. Well, Dario Franchitti mixed it up. They did not want to pit when the leader and teammate Scott Dixon pitted. No adjustments. Right side's there, you see, and he's down and away. And your leader, Scott Dixon, is in, has been quite on the radio, not looking for any adjustments here. We'll see he'll take four tires, fill it up with fuel for what should be his last pit stop, trying to get his first win of 2010. You see the crew go to work? Right front crew cam. Tire up, tire on caution. We got a car in the wall, guys. And there is the damage. As you can see, uh, it is a lot of damage on the right side. Oh, man, look at the whole Jay back wing. machine yep. of Sarah Fisher Racing. Jay, another driver warming up here this weekend to get ready for the Indianapolis 500. Now, he had been circulating around. He was a little stronger at the beginning of the race, and then he just started to get towards the end. And you see Sarah Fisher right there, her Dollar General machine. That's the team owner. So she will go around the race course and see her car with her driver up against the wall. Jay was running 25th out of the 27 cars. Uh, that gives you an idea how much a handful he had. Uh, Milka Duno is in 26th, uh, right behind him there. As uh, EJ Vizo is the only car up to this moment that was officially behind the wall out of the race with other damage. This is our third caution. As we mentioned before, the, the fewest cautions we've ever had here at Kansas was two. And so now with 21 laps to go, it will change all this last minute uh, leads that everybody had because I'm sure Scott Dixon was hoping to come out with that big race lead. Well, in this scenario now, we'll, uh, you know, always a better race to the end after a yellow because everybody gets to have an opportunity to look and watch the yellow car here on the high side in the frame. Actually, that's his car owner on the low side, Sarah Fisher. Now, for whatever reason, his car just starts to walk up the racetrack. Get another look at that and you can see he's already hit it once and here comes the second impact. And the momentum carries him all the way down towards turn number one. And there you see the safety crew and good sign. Jay is able to climb out of the car. And walking under his own power. So they'll take him to the infield care center and get him checked out. And as we mentioned, that best news we always see in that situation. As right now, we have eight cars shown on the lead lap because of the fact that some of these cars had already taken their pit stops right before the yellow came out. So we'll reset the field for you. We'll clean it up and we'll head down the stretch. There's 20 laps remaining here at the Kansas Speedway. Select Izard IndyCar driver. Driver selected, Dan Weldon. Select race transport. Mission, finish first. The fastest drivers in the world. See who 
wins at race to the party.com. From Honda. Take me out to the brickyard. Take me out with the crowds. Buy me some earplugs and a checkered cap. I don't care if we ever get back. Take me out to the brickyard. Take me out where it's loud. This place has a history that stirs the soul. A hundred year drama that never gets old. Let me root, root, root over the engine's roar. Let me cheer every driver and car. For it's 300, 400, 500 miles around the old brickyard. I'm John Andretti, and I know competition is noisy. But a quiet home is the ultimate finish line. And fuel bills. Who wants to throw money out the window? Window World is America's largest replacement window company. With a great product. And a real, no problems, lifetime warranty. We all trust Window World. For more information, visit windowworld.com or call 1-800-NEXT-WINDOW. You can spend a lot on replacement windows. But you don't have to. ESPN's coverage of the IZOD IndyCar Series at Kansas on ABC. Presented by IZOD, the official apparel sponsor of the IZOD IndyCar Series. Available at Macy's. And GoDaddy.com. Domains, websites, and everything in between. Well, we're here at Kansas with a great crowd, but in four weeks we'll be at the greatest spectacle in racing. Does Elio Castroneves win his fourth Indianapolis 500? Or does Danica Patrick write another page of history? We find out May 30th, beginning at noon. In fact, we talk to the drivers about their thoughts. That race is so big and, and so special. The best moment is when you walk out onto the grid, when the driver instructions happen, you walk out there and the place is full. You're just going so fast and you're so close from disaster. It's just being on that trophy. There's a lot of great names that have won that race. The greatest race in the world and the one that I want to win. Oh, it just gets me excited just thinking about it four weeks from tomorrow, and here's what we'll be looking at. Elio could make a page of history. We could have five women trying to qualify. Anna Beatrice uh, could be that fifth person, and uh, we already have 40 entries with only 33 spots, and Target Chip Ganassi Racing trying to be the first to do the double, and by that we mean win the Daytona 500 and the Indy 500 in the same year. And they have a uh, Great start leading here as far as taking momentum. Remember, they did not come out of the road course series here, the first four races. They were both tied for fifth, that being Scott Dixon and Dario Franchitti. Right now, there is uh, Scott's wife, Emma. Right now, uh, if it, it ends this way, I mean, the points are going to get really tight. In fact, the top five will be separated by 42. That was the gap between first and second coming in. Well, and you talk about the points and the points championship, but when a driver goes to Indianapolis and a team goes to Indianapolis, you really don't think about points. All you're thinking about is your likeness on the Borg Warner Trophy. And for all the drivers there, you're not really as conservative thinking about points throughout the race. It's a take all and go home because you want to make sure you are going home with the trophy and the check that goes along with it. So for all the drivers, it's going to be an issue where qualifying is going to be exciting, Marty, because of the new format. The 
top nine are going to go to a special format at the end of the day and uh, re-qualify to see who takes the pole and the cash that goes with it. And I think that everything that's looking forward towards here is going to be excellent. Well, we look back from Dixon, Castro Nevis, Frank Heaney, the top three, and there is Tony Kanan. Let's get more from Vince Welch. Well, Tony Kanan has 13 overtake uh, options left here in the final 15 laps. Here's a little bit of strategy from Kanan on what he looks to do on this restart. Is that where you want your rear bar? Yes, sir. Yes. On the outside. Then I'll be back. I'm playing Michael style. A lot of grip, and then I'll take it off a little bit. And one of the things that TK was hoping that he would get a little help from the car in front of him on this restart doesn't indicate that uh, he's going to get it, though, as the spotters went up and down. And there are not many people wanting to work with TK. And he said, well, just tell them what comes around goes around. We'll, well see and, what happens. All right, Vince. And here's the big key. If you are going to get to Scott Dixon, you better get him now on the restart because as the run gets longer, he has proven his car is stronger than everybody else's. And with only 15 laps left to go. It's going to have to be on your tail to be able to get an opportunity with that. That doesn't look to be the case because of lot of cars that are in between the Dixon and then Castroneves being in second and then Frank Heaty and Kanan. Now there are some lap vehicles. You heard Dixon's radio. Green, green, green. And we're back to green flag racing with now 14 laps remaining here at Kansas. Oh, and a crash right as we go back to green flag. Oh, and Takuma Sato is in it again with Hideki Muto. Unfortunately for Sato, that's been the story of his season. He has looked good, and then all of a sudden, something will happen. They'll have a mechanical, a crash, and again. And Marty, we just finished talking about taking the momentum into Indianapolis and have, coming out of here with a good run, a solid run, especially for Sato, who does not have any oval experience with the exception of here this weekend. And this really puts a bit of a damper on that. Rick, what are you hearing down in pit lane? Well, the first thing I heard was Hideki Muto saying, sorry, guys, sorry. But his spotter said, look, it's not your fault. Sato was moving. You were, didn't know about it. As a result, the two of them got in it together. So frustrating for this team. They had done such a great job of positioning him. What they had talked about him during the yellow was really more about how to get around the lap traffic. Yeah, they were worried about Tony Kanan, but they were more concerned about watching for that lap traffic. What they weren't concerned about was Sato, and obviously that's come to bite him. But uh, once again, the very first words that Hideki Muto's mouth was well, sorry guys sorry and they were both running in the top 10 let's go back and see the replay and they'll just drive right into our frame look to the right side of your screen remember on a restart you can go ahead and pass at any time and there's just too much congestion going there going out of turn four and it looks like Hideki Muto just made a move as Simona was coming up on the low side of him and he just made a move to the right probably did not see Sato was there and turned around and ended up pinching him up into the wall. So the two will make the mandatory trip to the infield care center, but both climbed out of their cars under their own power. And so now what this means is that uh, even a few more laps have dwindled by for all those hoping to get a shot at Scott Dixon. This is our fourth caution of the day. And you can see on the top of your screen, we are down to 13 laps remaining. Interesting on that restart, I was watching, and even Dixon pushed his push to pass, and just to get a little bit more horsepower, even though he had some lap cars behind him, he certainly knows that getting out in front and getting some distance between him and the car behind him, whether it's lapped or what have you, is going to be very important. Let's talk a little bit about one of the things we mentioned at the beginning of the broadcast. Target Ganassi Racing did not look all that impressive coming out of the first four races, and this was a turnaround for them. Here you are with Scott Dixon. If he leads the rest of this race, I mean, he's already led 155 laps. And the, you want to talk about a team's domination at a track since 2006. Chip Ganassi cars will have led 740 of the 1,000 laps if it stays this way to the finish. Well, very impressive, but it also tells you not only is the team back, but the frame of mind of Scott Dixon is back also. Certainly uh, speaking to him throughout the beginning part of the season with the difficulties he's had and some of the mistakes that went on and thinking about St. Pete's, also thinking about Dario, who you see here in the number 10 machine, making some mistakes even at St. Pete's, you do that when you're not getting the results that you expect and that you expect to have out of your team because when you drive for the top teams, there is a lot of pressure to perform and give results, and those guys felt it. Let's quickly get some uh, update on the strategy. Uh, Jamie, you're with Mike Hull. 
Yes, he's race strategist for your leader, Scott Dixon. All right, Mike, he has 18 push to passes left. We're going to have this next restart. What is the strategy? Does he use him right away on this restart? Yeah, you know, well, we don't we don't need him for 18 laps, obviously. Uh, I don't know. We've just raced good all day. He's had a good car all day. Um, certainly he's going to use what he has left. It doesn't really affect the fuel mileage. And uh, it's odd. We had all these long green runs and here at the end of the race. Now, all of a sudden, we it's like Yellow City. Uh, but uh, we'll just get to the end today with Scott in the target car. We're doing good. How does it feel to be back up front for the first time this year? <laughs> well, you know, we... Uh, we know we can race at the front, and uh, we're racing against a lot of quality people here. Um, and I don't think there's any surprises that the, the field is competitive. This is a competitive series, and uh, we just wanted to come away from here with momentum going toward Indy, because for us, the Indy 500 is very important. So uh, Scott's done a great job today, and, and for that that matter, so is, Scott, or so is uh, Dario in the suave car. So we're doing good. Thanks, Mike. Let's go over and check in with Vince. Well, Tony Kanaan is fourth on the grid, but uh, he's about 15th in line, Michael. Are you going to get any help with those guys in front of him uh, uh, up there on the spotter stand? Yeah, right. I, 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 we would like to think so, but, uh, you know, they're running their own race, too. But, uh, you know, two, two cars behind Dario, if he gets a good start like he did uh, on that one, you never know. He, Tony mentioned before the race they didn't have the speed, that, uh, and he was quite downhearted about the fact that they didn't feel like he was going to have much of a car today. How has he managed to keep this one in the top five? Just keeping the track position. I think we've done a good job in the pits, and uh, he's done a good job on the track, uh, staying with the guys up front. And, you know, I, I feel pretty good about what's going on here because there's a lot of cars now, a lot of traffic, so we'll see how Dario's car is in traffic. If it's not great, we might have a shot. Yeah, because TK's car, guys, has been very good in traffic today. Yes, it has. And because of the two cautions now, remember a lot of teams had made stops under green. We now only have six cars on the lead lap. It'll be Dixon, Castroneves, Frank Keedy, Kanan, Ryan hunter Ray. What a run for him today. And Ryan Briscoe, your top six, the only six in the lead lap. Here's our Firestone lap leaders. We mentioned the fact Scott Dixon has been in control. The only time he's been vulnerable has been on the short run. And uh, laps are winding down as we'll have nine to go next time by Jamie Little. Well, Chip Ganassi sitting up here for Dario Franchitti calling the race here. You guys have been battling your own teammate pretty much. What do you think? Does Dario have enough to take Scott Dixon, who's been dominating? Well, it's going to be pretty interesting here at the end, Jamie. There's a lot, a lot of the guys that have pushed to pass, you know, and with all this yellow, they've, they've got it's going to be pushed to pass to the finish here. So it's going to be pretty frantic. It should be good. Good place to be, right? Great place to be. Thanks, Chip. Marty? All right. Thanks, Jamie. <laughs> I'm thinking about Chip. He's always, he's, when things are going well, you can always tell he's got that big smile on his face. In fact, he's a very happy guy right now. But uh, speaking of happy, how about ABC's new series at Wednesday, 10 Eastern? It's the marvelous and the mysterious rolled into one. Welcome to ABC's Happy Town. Don't let the name fool you. ABC's Happy Town. It's all new Wednesday, 10 Eastern, 9 Central on ABC. And on this restart with which will probably be only about seven laps left to go, the guy that probably wishes that he was on Scott Dixon's tail box right at the very last few laps would certainly be Dario because remember how good his car was on short runs? That's I right. think he might have had something for Scott Dixon if he had that well, opportunity. And is this one of those rule changes you'd sort of like to see where uh, the, the lap vehicles would go going. to the Thank rear? Thank you for that. Yeah, I think that would make for a very exciting start and restart towards the end. See those numbers like Tony Kanaan, 14, Ryan Hunter Ray, 7. That's the push to pass that they have remaining. And uh, next time by, I bet you everybody's lit up <laughs> as uh, the laps are winding down quickly. Well, they'll push it and they'll have to have that 10 second recharge time. They'll push it again. And in, when you have a restart and there's lots of traffic here, we're certainly going to see our board light up green. Let's listen in on uh, Scott Dixon's radio. Maybe we can save some of those push to passes for Indy. <laughs> <That'd be nuts. laughs> That's Mike Hull talking about uh, saving the push to pass till the Indianapolis 500. I don't think there's rollover minutes here, is there? <laughs> no, I don't think so. All right, pace car has pulled off. The field is heading down the back stretch. We mentioned just six cars on the lead lap, but a lot of lap vehicles in between. So Scott Dixon's in control. 
Castro Neves second, Frank Keedy third, Kanan fourth, Ryan Hunter Ray fifth, Ryan Briscoe in sixth. And for Team Target Ganassi, they're looking for their fourth consecutive win at Kansas. Do they get it? Well, coming towards the strike, we are getting ready to go, but now they have waved it off. And there's so much debris on the race course, Marty. You saw it there as the drivers started to get going. It just seemed like there were still some pieces of shrapnel of carbon fiber and what have you. But what ends up happening here, too, is I think for the drivers that pushed the uh, button to push the pass before they got towards the green, they've used up one of their uh, one of their segments there. There's some of the marbles that we were talking about. Uh, they did sweep the track uh, after the second caution. Uh, and, and one of those guys that did use a push was uh, our leader, Scott Dixon. So he only has 16 left. And I'm, I gotta be honest, I don't think he's gonna need him the way that car's been running. Well, well we may have some deal making made, like watch the two and the four. Matos and uh, Weldon, they may get out of the way. Let the uh, chance for the race lead go as we're back to green flag racing here with now six laps remaining at Kansas. Castro Nevis is 2.3 seconds behind. He's going to have to get up there quickly. Kanan trying to get up there as well. He's past the 34. Roman Cini. But look at, man, he is just Five so good. Five good laps now. Five laps. Dixon has just opened up the margin again. There is second place, and here comes third with Dario Franchitti. Castro Nevis trying to hang on to second. Well, Franchitti's setting his sights right now on Castro Nevis, who's just right on the front nose of his car, and will he get it down? He's in the preferred line on the low side. I'm surprised that Elio left that low side open. And Castro Nevis was on the button, and it's not helping because now Franchitti's using it. They're side by side. They're going to be pushing that thing every chance they get. Remember, it's a 10-second recycle between each use. Four laps remaining. Scott Dixon well in control. And Franchitti has gotten around the three. Franchitti just set fast lap of the race, 25.73 seconds. Here comes Kanan. I was going to say they both need to look in their mirror right now because Tony Kanan is on a charge. It's a one-two finish. If it stays this way for Ganassi, but you got a Penske machine, Andretti Autosport, directly behind Dario Franchitti. And all the lap vehicles have assured Scott Dixon, unless of a major problem, he is in cruise control. Now, Kanan has set fast lap. He's right on Fran uh, Castro Nevis's back wing. 25.6 seconds. He's looking to go inside of him. This time by now, we have two laps remaining. I am surprised that Elio is leaving just a little bit of a door open on the low side, which was allowed Dario to get through, and it might even allow Tony to get through. Side by side, it is Kanan. He takes the position. Looks like he's going to be able to clear. White flag will be out this time by. Dixon sees it, and look at the gap that he's got. All he has to do is stay clean. Yeah, but watch Tony right now. He's got the speed. He's going high, he's going low, and Franchitti leaves that low line open just a little bit. Some lap traffic in front of him. He closes it. That's Danica Patrick. Trying to go down low, but there's no place for Kanan to go. Here comes your race winner. Two years in a row, it's going to be Scott Dixon. In well, second as they come across, it's Dario right Franchitti, there. followed by Kanan closely, and then Elio Castroneves, and Ryan hunter Ray and... Ryan Briscoe, that is your top six here at Kansas. Well, All right, man. let's catch your breath, Vince. With Emma Dixon, Scott's wife, what'd you feed that guy for breakfast this morning? That was a dominating performance. How happy uh, must he be after that He's win? He's going to be so happy. We've had a bit of a hairy start to the beginning of the season, so we really needed that win. And he had his pancakes as usual and his banana before the race. So, yeah, he's going to be over the moon. It's been a bit of a crappy start, so that's good for us. It got a lot better today. Scott Dixon generates a little momentum heading to his second home, Indianapolis, Marty. Fourth year in a row that Target Ganassi Racing has won here at Kansas. You want to talk about taking momentum to the speedway. 
They've got it. Well, and you know, I think all the drivers know how good he is at the speedway, and he is in the zone right now. He's have not been very happy, obviously, with the protection of the team and himself. He has admitted for the beginning races on a road course, but here it turned around for him. His 23rd career open wheel win, 16th on the ovals, and his first here in 2010. And let's take a look at our IZOD IndyCar Series point standings through five races now. And you want to talk about it tightening up. Remember, it was 42 between first and second. Will Powers' lead is now 26 over Scott, 28 over Elio Castroneves. And you saw Ryan Hunter Ray also in that mix now just fourth, 31 points behind. Top five separated by just 30 eight markers. This is going to be good. But as you said, when we go to Indy, forget about the points. It's all going to be about that Borg Warner Trophy. And a couple of ovals even after that. And Will Power being atop of the points right now, he's not the oval master that obviously guys like Scott Dixon and Elio Castroneves are. So he knows he has a little bit of work to do if he wants to stay up front. A little difficulty getting the uh, Hans device and the helmet combination off, but finally Scott uh, does that. He led the last 150 consecutive laps today, and we mentioned Target Ganassi Racing since 06 has now led 74% of the laps. Let's send it down to uh, the winner circle, Jamie Little. All right, Scott Dixon makes it two in a row at Kansas. First of 2010. Scott, how important was this victory heading into Indianapolis next month? It was huge. I think uh, always Kansas going into the month of May is a, is a big deal, but uh, Big, big deal for Target as well. We've uh, we've had a slow start, I think, on both sides of the team with the nine and the ten. But uh, this is definitely what we needed. Jump back up on the points table and uh, you know get some good good momentum going into Indy. Well, he's a happy man. He's not even sweating. Looking to go to Indianapolis and get a second Indy 500 winner win. Let's go over to Rick. Well, we're standing here with Dari Frankini, who just talking about the end of the race. And let's talk about the battle with Tony Kanaan at the end of the race. Yeah, it was good to see my old teammate up there, but uh, he was a little too close at one point. Um, we, had, we pitted one lap early there. We got the yellow, and that gave Scott just a huge advantage. Um, I don't think we had anything for him, but we were a lot more comfortable running second than when we got back in the pack. Um, and at the end of the back markers, just getting in the way again, um, running two by two, given the people running for position on the lead lap, nowhere to go. So we got to fix that. But uh, it was a pretty good race today. It looked like we could run pretty closely. And I was going to say, you have to feel really good going into Indy. What does this say about Indy? Well, we've got a little work to do to catch that number nine target car. <laughs> Scotty was really fast today, but uh, a great job by the target team again. We're looking forward to coming to Indy, and I'm glad we could give the, the Suave car another podium today. All right, good job. Dario Franchitti. So, Dario Franchitti, as we mentioned, uh, a big turnaround for Target Ganassi Racing. We started at the beginning of the broadcast. They were tied for fifth in the points championship chase. And uh, your thoughts now? We've seen one oval race. As uh, Before we do that, let's quickly catch up with Tony Kanaan. Vince? I'm wondering if this guy was sandbagging today. You told me the, before the race how bad the car is, and look at you. You finished third on the podium for the third year in a row. Well, like I said, I think, uh, you know, we work on the car. We didn't have a fast car. If you guys saw in one of the restarts, the two Ganassi boys, it just took away. But uh, I did what I could. We had a great start, great stops. I mean, the whole 7-Eleven crew did a great job, and they gave me a few positions, too. So uh, it was a good day. Great job, indeed, for TK, Tony Canaan. Uh, let's go to Rick. Standing here with Helio Castro Neves, kind of rubbing his head, uh, thinking about the end of that race. Let's talk about the end of the race. What was there? What did you have? What didn't you have? Yeah, unfortunately, uh, somehow my car started building up on this tier. And, um, well, we have uh, so much traffic in front, in front of us. Certainly the target guys, they were like on the, the Liga des On, you know. Right, well, let's talk about that. Are you going to have something for them at Indy? Well, that's what worries me. The good news is this is a different rules. You know, over there in Indy, it's a, it's a free-for-all. So uh, we're not going to we're not going to let them get carry this momentum. We're going to try to make sure we work four times as harder so we can get it in the... Uh, we, we, we funny how you brought up that number four. Yeah, it's funny, huh? <laughs> Helio Castro Neves looking forward to the next month. It's the end of this month. Uh, that's for sure. And uh, let's talk about this. What do you expect now we've had this first race on the Oval? Well, we're certainly going to a track that Penske has excelled at and his drivers are very comfortable at. Will Power maybe has a little work to do to get up to speed there. But Ganassi has been very strong there over the years. They have a great program there, a great aero program that makes the cars run strong. Overall, I think it's going to be a battle between those two teams. All right, so I'm going to make you pick up one guy. If uh, Las Vegas is going to give an odds-on favor, who you like right now? Oh, I mean, emotion. I'd love to see Elio win his fourth there. But right now, I mean, Dixon seems to be so good at Indianapolis. I'm going to have to go ahead and say Dixon at this point. 
point in time. All right. Well, let's set the stage for you because the next time we see you, it will be for the Indianapolis 500 four weeks from tomorrow. And it'll be on noon Eastern on ABC, the Indianapolis 500 presented by GoDaddy.com. Could we have five females in the race? Well, we'll find out. It's going to be fun. We hope you'll join us there. Coming up next, it's the AT&T ESPN Sports Saturday. Congratulations once again to Scott Dixon, our winner, and for our entire crew, Scott Goodyear, Rick DeBrule, Jamie Little, Vince Welch, I'm Marty Reed. Thanks so much for joining us here on the IZOD IndyCar Series at Kansas. Till we meet again.